Click, buy, deliver. With remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Race In. Three, two, <laughs> one, and welcome back to Chasing the Race In, episode 92. Um, we're over in Penrith, in uh, sort of, it's a beautiful part of the country, isn't it, Keith? Yeah. And uh, we're, we're joined by Keith Farmer, is it four times British champion? Yeah. Got that one right. How How's it hanging? How's things? Yeah, not That's too bad. That's a bit bad. personal, straight it's, off the uh, bat. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, actually, in work, someone asked me what's the length this weekend, or and I'm like, it was to do with work, by the way. But, uh, yeah, we were talking about something in work, obviously, and we have a work group, obviously, to put everything out, you know, so everyone's in contact with each other. And uh, and Michael goes, what what length gave? And, I, like, no one be, you know, has a laugh on it. And I was like, that's a bit forward, isn't it? <laughs> and they didn't see the funny side of it, obviously, but, yeah. <laughs> so you uh, don't work with anyone with a sense of humour, uh, then? Uh, some people, but... Uh, <laughs> Touching well, a nerve. What, what do you do for work? Uh, I work for a digger company, but, uh, like, they're massive. Like, we have 100 people on ground, and uh, we ac- I counted the other day, we've actually 51 machines, like, just ex- excavators. Uh, then we've, like, track dumpers and with eight wagons or something like that so Bloody hell. so is it like ma- massive construction yeah, sites and stuff yeah like we work all over like yeah you, you, one of the jobs was uh just to put that out there was uh you know when the bomb was fetched from the river thames oh yes that was our machine that took it out and one of our drivers so oh. like, was he on double time at that point going shit 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 <laughs> want to be. I, yeah i couldn't be the ground person on that one i couldn't trust myself i'd be behind him going and uh, so uh, do you work the digger machine Uh, no bits and pieces but uh, mainly in the yard just like uh, cleaning tidying yard cleaning Mm. machines just a bit of general maintenance just looking busy so how many people at work know that you're four times like british champion do you just drop Uh, that in on a christmas day uh, or something like that you you know what (laughs) i am the man yeah like uh, most people know to be fair but there's a lot of new people that I don't see and uh do you remind them <laughs> no <laughs> like uh, to be fair it's the last thing you want to do is like I love talking about motocross bikes and I could talk about motocross bikes all day but you know when people say about oh what you're doing this and that and I, I don't tend to go oh yeah I, I race bikes you know it's just mm-hmm. it's not for me I, I like to go to work to work Ah, I yeah. suppose um, we actually had Keith on the podcast uh, it was quite a while ago ah, wasn't yeah. it? so if, uh, I'll, I'll stick that in the description so if anyone wants to go back and uh, listen but that was when we were doing them over Skype and ah, yeah. uh, we've since then we've we've uh, had the studio and everything and uh, we're just talking about it before we came on air but we actually burgled that the studio was uh, was broken into at the I keep it in like a secure storage yard oh, right. not very and uh, yeah <laughs> well, obviously been burgled, mate. you know what I mean? not, not in Penrith that but yeah. uh, Penrith's in <laughs> Nice place. And I went to uh, went to collect it last night, and uh, late on I was with my little niece, and uh, I always like get it hook- hitched on, and then I check the doors and stuff, yeah. and I walk around the back, and the the door was all the way open. <laughs> There was a hammer on the floor with the lock smashed off. Oh, at least I left you the hammer. I didn't realise <laughs> I left you the hammer. And this, oh, uh. the place was just upside down. Oh. Uh, luckily, well, we did have uh, a few things stolen, yeah. um, but we don't. Obviously, we keep the cameras and the recording equipment stuff at home, ah, yeah. so we, we can still do the podcast. That's but it's, it's just yeah. If there was a bunch of kids really, really hyper around like the Anfield playing area of County Durham, they did nick a crate of rich energy from us. Like a full on twenty four rack of like energy cans, so they'll be absolutely int- bouncing around the place. It's quite like interesting that. as well because we, we had a crate full of Batham's beer and we had a crate full uh-huh. of rich energy, and they took the rich energy and left the Fair left flat. us the beer. So, <laughs> not too bad, yeah. so they're either like eleven, twelve. They switch on really yeah. early criminals in County Durham. They're like the proper switched on very early on, and they're like, which one's full of sugar? Let's go for that. Yeah. So, um, so we're pretty much going to blame you for this, Keith. You know what I mean? No uh, just you're you're a bad old. <laughs> no, I'm, a jo- I'm only joking. I'm only joking. No. I think we'll cover this on the last one. Uh, Penrith is obviously the where like near where your old team boss Paul Bird uh, lives. Is it Lang Langworthby? Langworthby, yeah. and um, I, t- I presume from uh, from your original homeland, it's the sort of link with Paul Bird that sort of brought you to Penrith. Yeah, like when I moved over, I think I moved over to England in 2012. I, lo- I lived in Northampton for uh, like eight, ten months and then uh, <coughs> lived with a bird down there and then moved back up uh, when we fell out. And uh, I just stayed here, like uh, moved in with Paul, to be fair, in his house. Uh, well, say his, his granny flat, but 
three story granny flat it's quite <laughs> big to be fair but uh, yeah Ch- champagne getting saved oh. in the morning say uh, yeah. bloody granny flat it, it opens <laughs> your eyes to be fair living but uh, you know it, it's one of the things he's he's a top bloke in the paddock and he does the job right but uh, but yeah he still keeps me motorhome and everything for me so oh, uh, fantastic. you know I, and he's anytime I go up and I see him you know proper crack him and his dad he's alright so uh, mm. yeah it's alright and it's the like where you keep the motor home is that where the the chicken farm is uh, yeah it's literally chicken farm you drive not through the chicken farm but to the side of it and then down uh, air ambulance and everything's there as well I've been in a chat show before with Paul and I'm, I'm sure he's told us how many chickens like a week they go through they but do, is it a hundred thousand or no I think he's extended his line so uh, it was a hundred thousand chickens a week but i think it's 120 or something now mm-hmm. Bloody hell, a week that. and they're all his own too they like they grow and everything you know themselves so it's no outside mm-hmm. it's, a ma- it's a massive uh, oh. sort of well production line isn't it? yeah and uh, like, ridiculous uh, yeah crazy and <laughs> dom's looking like <laughs> sorry i'm just i'm just uh, i'm a very visual person i can just see him opening the windows in the morning just to <laughs> hundred thousand chickens again um, you're all fucked i remember uh, <laughs> He was originally he was originally talking about it because he was saying no matter <sighs> how bad a day you're having, if you go into the the, the big chicken uh, things and sit and it obviously stinks and there's like hundreds of thousands of them God, there, Bennett. then you you realise your day isn't so bad. It, when I first uh, was it rid the superbike? Uh, no, I think when I read the super stock for him, and then he put me on the super bike and he walked me through the factory and he go you know the chicken factory because I'd never been in there before and he goes. If you keep crashing my superbike, this is what you'll be doing. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it was not clever yeah. at all. Like I'm, I don't like, I don't, I don't like anybody else's puke shit. No, <laughs> I don't even like my own. But like to see that was raw. Uh-huh. Like fair play to the people that work in there. Like and. Uh, I- did Paul, Paul start helping you in Stock 600 and then you yeah. won the title in Stock 1000 uh, together? Yeah. We're, for, weirdly, we were just talking about this uh, earlier and Steve Brogan used to be my uh, coach oh, at, yeah, yeah. at racing. And if you ever go back to, and watch your first ever Super Stock 1000 <sighs> win, that it's, was a good it's race. at uh, Brands Hatch in the wet. And I think you'd qualified something like 30th or something, like uh, yeah, f- yeah. way back on the grid. And then you came through, won the race, by like a comfortable margin, yeah. and if you watch the uh, the race interview afterwards, Steve's on the podium and he, he goes, "Yeah, it's a great race, and uh, <laughs> uh, well, fair, fair play to the lad that won uh, <laughs> some ride." He didn't know your name. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know your name at the time, and you came through and just annihilated the whole yeah, field. Yeah, it was it was good, like because in preseason testing, you know what it's like. First time I ever did a thousand. I heart like jumped on a super stock six hundred the year previous, and I obviously came over and won it, but. Like, I never really knew properly how to ride a bike, do you know what I mean? Because I was always on motocross, supermoto. So to transfer to 600 and then learn all the tracks in one year and, and win it, and then ride for Birdie, the top team in the paddock. And I was like, what? Single you know, swim, yeah. Yeah, and it was one of them. I, I don't like ever finishing second. So you, you try your hardest, do you know what I mean? And uh, to, I think I qualified 24th. Because there was that many stock thousand riders qualifying was split into two, so whatever happened within the qualifying, one session was dry, one was wet. So instead of taking the top twenty times or you know just like that, they done a uh, group one got whoever was quickest in group one got pole position, whoever was quickest in group two, you know, and so on. Like odds and evens. So I was twelfth in the group, but then I ended up like twenty fourth, whatever. Mm-hmm. And to come from that and to win it was like, you know couldn't believe it and then I, I think I won uh, round two as well uh, at Fruxton was it Yeah. and uh, I had a mega race to be fair because in the dry I didn't expect to go so quick in a sense mm-hmm. but to end up battling uh, I think the safety car saved me a little bit to be honest in that one and then to come back and uh, an old supermoto trick to be fair Steve Brogan went down in that one actually and uh, it was one of my old team bosses that I rid for in supermoto and and he caught me out one day and he says whenever someone comes up the inside of you and you're leaning on them don't keep on leaning on them you know keep leaning on them until it goes light and as soon as it went light when Steve Brogan was pushing me I just lifted turned back in and he went down it was like proper proper supermoto trick to be mm. fair but uh, it works so you knocked, knocked him off <laughs> in a sense but he was on the inside of me and he still yeah. fell off so yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, which quarter was this on uh, then? Last turn. Uh, which you've, track? You've never been through Fruxton. Fruxton. 
Thruxton's Thruxton no, no, the Thruxton. fastest uh, UK track short circuit track. So you decided yeah. to develop supermoto techniques at the world's right. fastest track. Yeah, why not, son? Why not? It, all the action happens at yeah. that last chicane. And uh, yeah, for <laughs> the, most UK tracks, uh, you know, they're on old yeah. parks and like the sort of second, third gear. Thruxton's like really wide and it's basically just flat right. out yeah. all around the back. So by the time you get to that last chicane, you're still doing like 50, 60 mile an hour. Yeah. Because you've been, it'll be like at the TT, you know, when you get to like a slow bit like uh, the hairpin at Ramsey or something because you've been going so fast it feel it like n- it makes the slower stuff feel even slower yeah. and that, that that's what it was like at Thruxton but go, looking back on that it's, it's like it's mad really when you think going from winning stock 600 straight away and then jumping up winning stock 1000 first yeah. time and it you know crazy really <laughs> yeah it, it, like I don't think of it now really do you know what I mean at the time I just wanted to win races I didn't have the mentality to think right I need to start stringing this together or mm. be sensible about it I just just literally wanted to win races if you could go back now would you change that attitude or would you just keep doing what you're doing no I wish I could keep that attitude now to be fair uh, right. because I probably think over far too much now you know whereas then I was just like right just gonna letting win, you know, win the race, do you know what I mean? Natural and, riding ability. And, and instead of now, I think of everything. You know, in racing, especially uh, the year I rode the superbike for Birdie, I couldn't, I, my head was mashed because mm. I was overtraining, couldn't sleep at night because I was literally, could not stop thinking about the job uh, because obviously I, I wanted to do the best. You know, I'd gone ah. from stock six, stock five, won the two, going to superbike, teammates to shaky burn, and I, all of a sudden, like, you know, I'd, put uh, Shaky off in Q2 not put him off track but uh, put him off pole position in, uh, in was it Brands Hatch I think I qualified him in Q2 because he let me follow him and then uh, in Q3 he wouldn't let me follow him anymore and then obviously the, the whole crash thing started but uh, but yeah it was everything happened too quick you know I, I wish right not only that if I hadn't uh, tried too hard but I think I wish I'd preferred to stay another year in Stockville like um, I know I shouldn't like uh, what age were you with this uh, superbike jump I only started at 22 in super stock 600 I think so it was uh, no it was 20, 23 in 2011 I think so uh, yeah it would have been 24 25 25 25 in, that's a huge that's, that's in, you know everyone's desperate to get to superbikes and I guess I'm, I'm in a, uh, a similar yeah. position where I'm kind of you know you know, wanting to get to superbikes yeah. and the, the opportunity the right opportunity just wasn't there but I guess um so looking at it from the other side you you, you wish that you hadn't rushed oh, so yeah. quickly I think my career could have been a whole lot different now if I had have took my time you know what I mean if, if, if I hadn't have been probably my worst enemy was to, to go out and in a sense win things do you know what I mean mm-hmm. because he, as you win like obviously Birdie seen the kid you know oh, turn you know, up because everyone said uh, the fellow that looked after me Darren Golly at the time said come to Olden Park was it round three or something like that oh this kid's good you know and I'm sure Birdie's heard that all before you know, as everyone does and turned up uh, got put off track on uh, lap one or something like that and then uh, came back to win the race and Bertie was like right you know prop then proper interested and uh, Eyes all job. of a sudden started looking after me you know won the stock five for me after you know went to Superbike showed potential but just it wasn't consistent enough do you know what I mean and when you have a teammate like Shaky that was winning you know our first second or third week in week out you know every single session was first second third and and then to go from this kid that yeah shown potential but was cost me an absolute fortune in destroying bikes well you're only going to kick him off aren't you i'd do the same now to be fair <laughs> <laughs> no which uh, is a, which is a total fair yeah. comment isn't it but i've, I've just listened to uh, sorry i've just yeah listened to shaky's autobiography you know how you can like listen uh, to books on yeah. uh, or amazon audible it was a really really good book thoroughly into i started it on like a run one day and i, it, I ended up finishing it a few days later yeah. so like, i was just listening to it all in all my free time and um yeah it was a, it was a really good sort of honest account of his life and um obviously a lot about you know riding for paul and all that type of stuff what was he like as a teammate obviously you mentioned the fact he he let you to he told you early on but uh, yeah like was it was he helpful yeah he was to be fair even in stock five uh when i was not just a teammate but there was him rap boy studies and uh, and then me on the stock five and like <laughs> <laughs> you know he, he was he, he proper helped me to be fair because i I, lit- I was literally just getting on a bike and riding it you know trying to, to override it etc and 
not to say the competition wasn't strong then, but it it probably uh, wasn't maybe as strong. Do you know what I mean now? Where whereas now, like every class is like so so competitive, and uh, I think you could get away with maybe overriding a bike back then, and you know, and and having a, having getting away with things like that, but. I don't think you could get away with that now. You know, to to come in as a complete privateer and win a championship, it's not very heard of now. Mm. Do you uh, think it's possible now? Uh, with with the depth that you're talking about now with British, it is it it is possible, but just uh, like the money to take to do it right. You know, I mean, you need to be firing tires out. You need to, you know, your bike needs to be consistent. You need to not be crashing, and uh, it's. It's so difficult, it's and everything's getting how harder, obviously, with the circumstances. Mm. It's, it seems in a short period of time as well. Like well put, by not, the way. Not long, not long ago, I remember a top of the range sports bike was kind of in your sort of ten, eleven thousand bracket. Yeah. And um, so, you, and all the manufacturers had the you know that sort of range. Yeah. I remember like going to Westgate Road as a kid, and like going up and down, and like there was. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you're looking at around sort of ten, eleven, and then it's gradually. Even stepped then, you're thinking I can't afford. That. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it's yeah. gra- it's gradually stepped up, but now all of the or to start with the super stock bike, the all you know the the new Kawasaki's 25 26 BMW oh, for the M Sport is 35 I think um oh, you, you're uh, looking you're looking all of the top bikes to th- cuz you get like the standard bike like for example with the Kawasaki you get the normal ZX10 which is like t- what like 12 13 grand or something yeah. but then there's the the red top engine like the race version yeah. which is you're yeah, adding on like over another 10 grand but it's the same for all uh, like the, yeah. the bmw or all Everything of them the and you you just think to 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 build yourself a race winning super stock bike now it's some serious money that's, and that's the thing you know and and to be fair like look at super stock you know uh like you guys last year you know even over this last three four years well even longer like Stuart Higgs has a proper situation on his hands because super stock riders, you know, the, not to say they're, they're worse or slower, are you know the caliber is every, everywhere in every class now, and you look at the times, there ain't that much difference in times on average from a super bike of like a super stock will still cost what say thirty five forty grand a bill, and you go to a super bike which. What, 100, 120? On the top you know. eye. Is yeah. that what sort of money they are? Yeah, it will, it will be, be easy. Easy. Yeah, and, but, well, I wouldn't think birdies would be that, but, uh, you know what I mean? But if you were to build a Suzuki, I would imagine you'll have no change out of at least 90 grand, I don't think. And Suzuki's probably the cheapest. Yeah, so, yeah to be honest. Yeah, yeah. it would, yeah. And, and like, no. good bike, don't get me wrong, but, uh, you know, when they're not, they're spending all the money in the MotoGP, the, you know, the, the production bike suffers a little bit. Mm. But still a good all round package and still wins races, so it's still good. But uh, you know, it's just it's just crazy the amount of money that it takes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy. And uh, I think that when we last had you on, I think it, you'd just finished a spell with uh, Tyco and you'd been injured. Right, um, yeah. You broke your leg at Knock Hill. Yeah. And um, I think when when we had you on, it was like the end of that season or something. Like you'd ah, missed that yeah. full season. Right. You were coming out of rehabilitation that, at this that's, point. That's, yeah, yeah. Set, you rebuilt your two fifty motocross bike. You were starting to get back <laughs> on with that. No, no, I remember the whole thing. I remember, no, yeah. like, and just yeah. to, just to recap, so you started with the Taz team, the BMW. Yeah, and, got both um, his legs. It was actually a real a real strong start of the yeah. season. It was the it wasn't the bike now, but it was like a new BMW yeah. back then. You and Christian were both around about the same. I think you were like fifth yeah. and sixth most like sort of races and yeah. stuff and um it was if there was one time where you you know a, a big injury you know. could have done it without like ah, yeah. i know it's, it's like sort of stating the obvious but you would you'd sort of got, got into a good position and you were nice and like st- not trying to win every yeah, race yeah. but just banging t- consistent results in and um yeah i mean you, it's, it's one of them like uh i think you know ever since i've had my little gear at Chloe, uh, with my partner Sam, like uh, my, my attitude and everything changed towards racing, and I keep became quicker, but just less, you know, a lot more relaxed on the job, and uh, it's difficult, isn't it? Like, uh, you know, I had a crash at Donington or two big crashes at Donington on the superbike for Tyco, and uh, they hurt, but I, I got away with them. Do you know what I mean? But. Uh, I, was, I remember seeing you in the med centre actually that morning. Okay, now that hurts. Is that, is mm. that coming out of the chicane? One of the, that yeah. was humongous. That, like, it, it's on it, slow mo on Eurosport now and then, and you just I watch still it going, see it. And I'm like, okay, now that, that was huge. Do you get high side dreams by the way? Yeah, yeah. 
So excuse I'm, me. Do you get high side dreams? No, no. Road races, we get wall dreams. <laughs> <laughs> wall dreams. <laughs> no, seriously, that is a thing. Like, uh, I'd love a high side dream. Uh, that would be a lovely. Virtually evening. everyone I know that is, like does track days yeah, or race has high side dreams, and it's basically horrible. where in in your dream you you just. You yeah. on your bike and you're riding, and then that's that feeling you get just before. So when you know that it's gone wrong, but you're just about to hurt yourself, yeah. And you wake up and you're like, <laughs> it's horrible. Like I remember that crash. Do you know what I mean? And and because was it Christian had passed Hickey, so then Hickey had run wide, so I, I cut the chicane back to get a good drive out. And because then I cut the curb, the second curb at a different angle. And it just spat me out of the seat. And honestly, it felt like I was in the air for like 10 seconds. And I was like, No, mate, that was 10 oh, minutes on yeah. slow mo. Oh, yeah. And I just knew straight away that fucking hell, that was going to hurt. Loads like, of people, to be fair, Brooksy had a massive that, one that yeah. weekend. He did. I, like, yeah. What suits do you wear? You're an RST man, aren't you? Was. You, right, you, you, got a new, you got a new yeah. flavour? Who are you with? It? Can you announce? Go uh, on, fuck. Go on. 4SR, right. leathers. 4SR. Yeah. Now, do they have. Were you in an airbag suit when that happened then? No. No, you I were, don't think it's, uh, were, that was 19. Mm-hmm. They only come out in 20. It's for, right. Four or so, is that something to do with Dean Allison? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. Uh, ah, yeah. Have, have they gone down the airbag route yet? Yeah. Or, oh, right, there we go then. So, like, look yeah. at like, you watch the lap times now. You watch an airbag suit, <laughs> let's have and a portion. A, and, <laughs> an, and an airbag suit last year didn't make me any faster. <laughs> <laughs> there we go then, there we go. Oh, so anyway, uh, touching on the families, uh, how old is your little girl now? Uh, four. Four. So was that... <laughs> was that like an immediate attitude change you know you're saying you felt calmer you're feeling calmer you're getting faster which yeah, is great just, but was that yeah, like I think it took the whole thought process out of my head like I said right. before like uh, when I was birdie and that and not, not nothing to do with birdie just no, me no. in general trying to be the best person that I could be for yes. a, a super bike and uh, just overthinking the job way too much putting in a sense far too much effort in uh, because I lived with Birdie, I had no bills to pay, so I I didn't work, you know, I only helped out with the bike, obviously fixed it a lot of times, to be fair, uh, but, but yeah, I'd, I'd literally nothing to do, so all I'd done was eat, sleep and train and ride motocross with Brad Anderson and, and just train and ride motorcycles, do you know what I mean, so, whereas when Chloe came along, I was just like, go to the track, do my riding and come away to the motorhome. And you forget everything. Do you know Aye. what I mean? Because you've your little one, and you concentrate. Like even if it was a bad session, and you were like, you knew you were riding shit. You came away, and you, it was forgot about. So you went to the the, the garage again to ride your bike, and it was like a complete new session or day, whatever. Do you know mm. what I mean? So yeah, it changed a lot. J- just going back to that situation when you were uh, living at Birdies and stuff. If you could s- speak to y- yourself back then, I know you said you were like, say, overtraining and things like that, but given the same opportunity again, you probably would be training just as hard type of thing. What what advice would you give yourself back then that you really wish somebody had just said to you? Just just to, to go out and ride the bike and relax. Do you know what I mean? And, and not in a sense, you know. I, oh, that must be. I tell you I, what, yeah, we hear this all the time from loads of riders. I hear it, he hears it. But switching that off. It, it is hard <laughs> to be fair and I, but I was always sent out after Shaky follow Shaky follow Shaky do you know what I mean and that was one of my worst things you know in a sense me being me try, you know at the time I was like just eager to go fast and uh, you know if I had a like in a sense what PJ Jacobson done he started with uh, Taiko Suzuki that was that year mm-hmm. and he started slowly and by the end of the year he was battling for podiums you know what I mean and, and I think if I had to change my thought process to sort of you know catch a monkey slowly slowly catch a monkey job I think we could have been a different situation but I wouldn't change out mm. do you know what I mean I, no. I had great opportunity you know best bike in the grid and I give it all a god but uh, and I showed potential but I just crashed a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's one of those things yeah, you speaking, can only try no, hey, that's yeah. it you're not wrong what is PJ Jacobson doing now it's just American uh, is, he, is he doing flat track or something now he's not doing more America uh, maybe maybe he is uh. who's that another American who went to flat he was 600 rider James Raspoli he's doing right. flat track oh, now. Is it? yeah yeah he's back flat tracking Right. I hear there's mega money in it. Have we talked about this I on the show? I think you can. I think you can scrape a living out of it. I don't yeah. think there's me- mega money to be oh, fair. Yeah, because I think uh, P. J. Jacobson's crew chief, whenever he was over here, was a uh, you know big man Mark Keller. I uh, do. Oh, you'll know big man. Irish fella. Aye. Hey, sir. Come on. <laughs> oh no, I'm, like yeah, Roy Armstrong got a um, a bike dropped off with him, like a one five to fully restore it. He's got a. He's bur- it was first time I've ever seen burning turf. 
You ever seen that before? And like, no, no, they're digging out the ground, they're burning uh, yeah. it. The smell of it, I felt like I was walking into like a brewery. I was like, this is so peaceful. <laughs> you wouldn't want to slap off that fella, mind. He, I, I tell you, he got, I remember asking him, like, you know, this bloke's been round the block a fair few times, and this man will like put some wisdom on it. I goes, right, you know, what, what do you make? I'm doing this, I'm doing that. He goes, just, just pull your fucking finger out, young. And I'm like, that's some solid advice right there. Yeah. He's a, he's a good lad, mind. And he, he because he had obviously been with PJ and that, like, uh, he had talked to me. I've, I've, I've talked to him a few times of coming on board as crew chief and this and that and the because he's like, obviously, as he can ride a bike as well, but he's stupidly smart with you know with how to set it up etc yes i so uh he had spoke to me about going to america and i, and I could have made a, a, a decent chunk of money to be fair which i've never actually made but uh it's just america and it? it's going out there you know family and like, was going this away from sorry was this before your little girl uh, came along i think it was just as uh maybe wasn't there but was on the route you know what i mean Aye. So it was in, you were busy, busy making, you were yeah. busy making clothes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the process, but uh, in the pro, I'm not sure. Big man. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not, not. Give me a ring back in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't even take a long. Oh, well, good luck, you smoothie. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, like it's ju- it's it's just here. Uh, American went big, didn't it? At a time, but I, I just think the asses fell out of it a little bit. Because uh, mm-hmm. I think Dunlop's out there at the minute, isn't he? Doing a big in is it the Indy race or He's something? Doing Daytona. Ah, Daytona. It? Now, uh, now I'm glad you brought that up because it totally skipped my mind. Um, there was a uh, like a BBC like bikes press yeah. release about that Michael was going to help you out or something yeah, like that. And, and he, when, when, he was to be fair, and in in a roundabout way, still is. Yeah. But, uh, him and Jackson racing. Uh, obviously, Jackson does the roads. Uh, yes, done the, the, the endurance world endurance as well. They, they did for a belt like for a bit, didn't they? Or they yeah, still are? I, I, I don't can't know. remember, but uh, yeah, Alan, is it Alan, Alan Jackson? Alan ra- Jackson rang me up and just goes, uh, just basically said, "Here, uh, seeing you not lost your ride, do you want uh, to try and put something together?" Michael's on board as well. He'll, you know, he's got a bike in that belt, and Alan has to be fair too, yeah. too as well, and. They said, "How about doing something?" So uh, we're, we're still trying, yeah. uh, but it's the money side of things. You know, it's uh, it's all there. We've got I've got a truck and everything organised. The fellow's going to supply a truck and that for me for a year. Uh, he's got the bikes, got the crew. Uh, we just basically need money. Aye, that's the thing, isn't it? It's and the- it's it's here. It, it is what it is. Everyone needs it, don't they? And you know, a lot of people have. To be fair, loads of people have offered me bikes. Uh, Sean Muir actually messaged me, offering me a right. new BM and that. But he says, look, he says, I want to back at the end of the year. Same say that it is, but you have to run it yourself. And I'm like, well, the, not to say the bike's cheap, but, you know, it's yeah. it's the cheaper version of actually running the bike. Do you know what I mean? Whereas run the bike for a year, tires, slicks, any crash damage. Do you have an exact figure on that? Because, like, Chris, we, we take the piss out of him, like, spreadsheet. You know, he's got everything marked down. He knows every penny. Is that something that you do, or is it and, something that and scares and the shit out of you, no, like me? No, I've, I've never really been bothered with that. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I've just... Oh, no, just like, just uh, with that option on the tail from Sean. Like, right, they yeah. are... Um, we can give you this, blah, 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 but you need to run it. it like, I, I never even thought of about it, to be honest, because hmm. I, I don't have a sponsor's that that size to try and even think about it do you know what I mean mm. yes sir. that's why when the Jackson racing thing come on I'm like yeah this, this is achievable so at the moment is that your biggest opportunity for next uh, year your, be- your best uh, chance of racing uh, so sort of uh, and there's uh, actually because I'd signed for Morello well there's a sponsor came in that's actually bought all Morello stuff all right. So uh, that's sort of a lead. So, so let's stop you. I feel like we should slow you down a little bit. There's a lot of things coming out yeah. here, which is brilliant. So keep go, keep going. There's a few keep sort going. of, uh, what's the word, <laughs> yeah. uh, irons in the fire. Like basically, for me to, to get a ride with the Jackson, uh, I need to cover tyres and fuel, which is about 25 grand. Uh, is this in stock or yeah, superbike? Stock, stock thousand. Yeah, oh, with, I'll give him a run then. Yeah, with the new Honda Fireblade, it would be. so. Uh, right. Which... Mega, to be fair, mm-hmm. uh, strong bike. Uh, yeah, strong and bike. and I think I really fancied the Honda because the last time I rid the Honda in sixteen, were you in stock for I was, yeah. Like I just loved it, to be fair. You well, know, because that was the key garage setup. But yeah. Who, who was? I remember you kind of running out the back of the Honda thing, but it was yeah. it wasn't yeah. an official team, really, was it? No, it was just uh, just privateer team, really. Mm-hmm. He's he spent all the money himself and that, and 
and that that year the the Honda was nowhere near as fast as uh, like a privateer Honda back then was probably like about 180 brake mm -hmm. and against the sort of BMWs and the yeah. Kawasaki's so but it was my first year on a stock thousand so it was perfect because I basically the the skill difference was about the same as uh, you know the difference in speed on the thing so you yeah. you would make loads through the corners and then I would catch you back up on the straight yeah. but it, it I learned so much doing that uh, yeah. and it was purely because you were on a slow bike but it, it allowed yeah. me to follow you for like yeah. for a lot and uh, <laughs> I managed to learn a lot that year. It, it was good like I loved it that, and I think that's why I've sort of bit of the horn for the Honda again because yeah. it's like you know I, I got on it we never really changed a lot from once we found a decent setting with it and I just got on it and rid the wheels it, of was, it. it was so funny as well because if there was one track that I would have said I don't think you'll do very well next it's a power circuit and it's fast as Thruxton <laughs> and he, he went and put it on pole position on like a well underpowered bike literally I think the I don't know if that lap record still stands you know is it like uh, a 16 or something, 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 stupid. something. I literally went out done in qualifying and went out with a new front an old rear done like two laps and you know what it's like Thruxton you can't use too much of a tyre so came in we put a new tyre in and literally I'd come in in like a lap or two earlier than everyone else so I literally as I was going out everyone was coming in so the track was absolutely clear and I literally cruised the lap and for that lap I, and honestly if I was going to crash I was going to crash big because literally led everything on the line mm. and i went actually i didn't i didn't think it was that clean of a lap and i went for the second lap and it was just full opposite lock everywhere and you know when <laughs> because it was opposite lock it was like fucking hell this is fast isn't it and i was literally like 1.5 seconds off my quickest lap and i like i don't i i'd actually need to check that out because it, it was ridiculous I, when i went there on the bm in 18 i didn't even get close on I a think super it was like a nail, super stock, uh, super oh, stock. Super stock yeah, yeah. and it, I think it was like a second or a second and a half off me time in the Honda. Yeah. So wh why is that? Is that too much electronic aid, or could you turn that off, or uh, why that's a fair jump? That. Yeah, I just I, I, I've always loved Fruxen. On the BM, I, I just couldn't get a setting. The bike wasn't doing what I wanted, and when it's like that, you know, when going into qualifying, I was still chasing my tail, trying to find a setup, and then qualifying finished, and I was like still not happy. Uh, I can't remember where I qualified, but then went into the race and I was still tr taking a gamble on where we were set up, you know, mm. so it was difficult, but uh, yeah, till I think I ended up fifth or sixth or something on the uh, in 18, mm. and I was just like, came in, just gutted because I love trucks, and, do you know what I mean? It's one of them, you proper laid on the line and balls out, isn't it, it's really? Weird, it's weird though, because uh, like I said, that, that's Super a circuit that, especially after you'd done on the Honda, that's a circuit that you would have your life that you would yeah. do well on, and then you strugg struggled, and uh, maybe it was, I think that year you had a harder tyre there in that's Silverstone, right, yeah. and you maybe the the uh, tyre go bike didn't have a good setting with us. Yeah, so that's right, yeah, because everyone was destroying tyres, weren't they? Yeah, so sorry, going back to your options for, for this next for this year coming for people that don't know uh keith was signed up to race for morello uh, in Superstock, and at the it wasn't that long ago was it it was after everybody else had been sort of sorted a deal and stuff and uh was it the, did the steve have to pull out with the financial issues yeah something happened within his work uh and obviously with the COVID job it's yeah, totally understandable yeah. and like i think there's a lot pro there's that's probably the the first of quite a there'll be a lot more yeah, teams i yeah. think I, pulling out i was about to say how many well, you can't really put a number on it, but do you think there'll be a, a smaller paddock this I year think, due I, to that? I think so. I uh, like I've I've spoke with Stuart Higgs a few times, and you know he's trying to get old teams back into it, and it's difficult to win it because no one wants to spend money, and you know Stuart and obviously Jonathan Palmer and that they'll have a job in their hands trying to get it running because if I don't know how true it is, but I've heard that they're not going to run behind closed doors because they've obviously last year they've lost that much money through not getting crowd and at the end of the day it's the crowd that pays the bills really isn't it so exactly. we, we've said that on the show so many times it's an entertainment business yeah it, that's all it is isn't it so you need people through the doors to get it to pay yeah, so, so I, feel, I feel sorry for them to God try and I. get it off the floor again you know 
Mm-hmm. And so for so you're in this position where you you left without a ride before the season, and, and that, so that that's why we're talking about like different yeah. teams involved. And uh, so Jackson Racing are looking to run a Honda, but you need to take uh, tires and fuels so yeah. around the sort of twenty twenty five grand mark. And then you also mentioned an, an option with the the old Mure- like the sort of Morello yeah. setup, but with another yeah, team. Yeah, same sort of crew. Uh, Chris Sale and that he's going to crew chief at that still, and uh, but just obviously someone's a different owner. Yeah. Uh, so that's we're waiting on an answer for that. Uh, yeah. it, it's fantastic it, news that someone still wants to yeah. keep that going, that team yeah, going. Which it's is it's just, uh, just you know, it's like it's ev- you know because it's everything late developing, you yes. know, and obviously with me with the Morello and then it falling through and and then everyone else signed and deals took it, and not to say there's you know there's people said oh yeah you know we'll give you this this and this but you have to pay for this. And it's the same thing, and no disrespect to anybody, I, I, I'm four times champion, you know what I mean? I, I've been in the Superstock three times, and I've won it twice, you know, third in the Honda. I want to still enjoy riding a bike, but I, I do want to be going in to finish fifth, do you know what I mean? No, and no, I know, you're there to obviously, win. Chrissy, you won it, but I want to go in to win it again. Simple as, do you know what I mean? And I think with the right package, you can, do you mm. know what I mean? And I know it's going to be seriously competitive again, which you know, which is mega to be fair to have good battles. But if uh, if it comes, it's horrible to say. But if it comes that I can't get a package that you know that I have to bring money and I can't find money, well, I just have to hang up boots. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, because uh, we talked about this on the the last time you were on the podcast, oh, right. and the fact that. Um, You'd smashed yourself up so much, and you'd you'd lost maybe like six months of work. You'd obviously you've got a family and stuff, and you you were mm. just saying like I'm I'm wanting to race, but at the time you were saying like I'm wanting to race, but I'm I'm not doing it for nothing type yeah. of thing. And uh, it's totally under, understandable yeah. to be in that position. You've after after everything you've achieved, and you know after how much you've smashed yourself up and stuff. That's the thing. It's, and it's a massive uh, risk that we're taking yeah. as riders. So. That, that's the thing, and and that's the way I see it. You know what I mean? And I understand like mechanics and they they all need paid don't get me wrong but I, I see it the way i see it now is like i've done it for so long won four championships and never actually earned money out of it and i'm thinking now right well we're the riders we're sitting on the bikes that won this risk in our lives but yet i'm still not getting paid for it but yet everyone around me that sat a mechanic you know brolly dolly girls get fifth fortunes and i'm like Maybe yeah, you're in the wrong career, Keith. You need to get your stilettos <laughs> and your I don't know how it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I just, uh, to be honest, it's one of them. If it, if it can't, like, get something out of it, you know what I mean? And not only get something out of it, I want to enjoy it again. You know what I mean? Those last two years, you know, through Tycho, to be fair with me, own fault, crash, broke my legs. And last year was just, you know, not the results I wanted. I smashed my shoulder to bits again. And, and you know, when you're not enjoying it, it it's a horrible sport because then everyone's like you know going why are you crashing so much you're you you're shit now and you know what i mean and it, and it is it's easy to get on the, that you know what i mean and, and mm. think negative of the job but i think that's why the only like people had someone had rang me about riding a superbike for them and i'm just like nah i'm not interested and there's literally i'd only ride for three teams for me to go to superbike now i'd rather go in super stock and try to you know enjoy myself and win races and if i can make a few quid out of that you know all all be it but if not i'll restore some motocross bikes and have a bit of fun yeah yeah sure but no you've set your bar out and good on you, you and yeah I mean? you, wait that, that's the way to be it's crazy yeah. there's a i don't know what it is but there's quite a few irish riders at the moment that uh, yeah. you know you've got you Seely, josh elliott andy reed yeah who all four of you don't have rides at the moment and you're all class class riders and it's f- from a similar sort of area yeah. it's, it's odd really it's, it's and uh, i've seen Sealy's off offering his services but i don't right. i think obviously with Sealy, valeting by the way let's let's tidy that up valeting what's that offering his services no no i meant um <laughs> his race services but the um oh well done you've caught up there yeah. <laughs> uh 
but it, you know, yeah, he's out, he's out valenting and working yeah. and getting ready and tr- trying his best to get something Good sorted. On. But the, yeah. um, I think the northwest is big selling point, point yeah. isn't it, for teams? Yeah. And obviously, the fact like the uncertainty around the northwest isn't obviously helping. But he's still a top class short circuit racer, that, that's and the there's thing. just nothing, yeah. no, there's nothing on the table yeah. at the moment. Andy Reid's another one who's uh, he's very talented, but he always seems like he's massive. Cr- he never has a little crash, does know, he? Yeah. And um, he's one of the most talented riders that I've raced with over yeah. the years and but for some reason it just hasn't seemed to happen it's it just I, I, I friendly at Andy and I, I, I texted him not that long ago to see what he was up to and actually it was just before my deal fell through with Steve and uh, I, you know because Steve was sort of him and Han with riding running a second rider and this and that and the other and, uh, and I says oh here there's Steve's number you know because he, he is a good kid you know what I mean and he has bags of talent and he just needs sort of someone to in a sense you know, you can tell him to be calm before he goes out, but like he changes to a different person, you know, after he goes out. And, uh, you know, if someone could be sitting on his shoulder going, like, calm down, you know, you don't need to win every single race. You know, I think he could be like, you know, little bags of talent, do you know yeah. what I mean? And he could win loads of stuff, but mm-hmm. just like, hmm. when was it 18 when I raced with him? You know, he'd come back from injury, came back to Fruxton, and then all of a sudden, like, First re- first session back and he pinged himself. Huge and broke outside. Broke his wrists. That yeah. was horrendous. That, that crash he had on the on the Tyco bike at Cadwell Park. That was I, I was behind him going into oh. turn one. And you know what it's like, Cadwell Park. You fly down the straight back in into that fast oh. left. You've got like right lent over elbows down and out the corner of my eye. I just seen the bike just cartwheeling Jesus. up into the air. And uh, yeah, he's, I think he smashed the bike, but he also smashed himself ah, up there. Yeah. But yeah, top top lad, and it is another one that seems uh, well. I don't know if he's racing. Uh, he came back last year and did the first That's round on a Moto right. Two bike, but again had yeah, a massive crash down Craner. Right, yeah. um, I don't know if he's looking to come back racing. I think he is still. Uh, like I say, he's you know he's working flat out now as well. He works for his brothers. Uh, what is it? Doing tattoo artist, didn't uh, he? he was doing his own tattooing, but I think he he works along with his brother, uh, doing powder coating and stuff for alloys right. and all the rest and that. And uh, he obviously seems quite busy, and not that he's not bothered but come back, he wants to. But it's one of them. It's the money situation of paying mm. into a ride, you know. Because a, a lot of people get mixed up in this sport, don't they? Just because you're a front runner like yourself and Andy and Alice Seely, you think, oh, you're just rock star payments. No one has to worry about that. And we were talking about sponsorship how reliable that is but like you say we've all just got to roll up the sleeves and muck on there there's Alice yeah. Seeley started up a valet in business like cleaning yeah. his own cars and then powder coating and whatever you're doing diggers yeah. <laughs> yeah, jo- what's what's the score with Josh Elliott because he, you see, he, he, he went from he went from winning a race That's, and by the end of the yeah. season he was he obviously lost his ride with OMG and yeah. was um, and then the first round this year just gone he came and did one round in stock thousand yeah. and, that, and that's it but he seems to have totally went from you know top yeah. almost, top of the list to, to sort of out of the sport he's just dropped out yeah because yeah. I, I messaged him he put Shame. something on his uh, story on Instagram and I, and I messaged him I can't remember what it was about and I messaged him I says oh what's crack what you on with you know you're coming back and then he, he just says no I'm not he says everyone's looking mental money and uh, and I don't blame him to be mm-hmm. fair you know you get to that point like I, I'm at this, like the same point I was like in a sense the team should be the one this is it'll probably do me no good this but the teams that uh, you know are looking riders to bring money it, well it should be their job to fetch the money do you know what I mean as the riders are the one risking their lives, and but it happens throughout all sports. You know what I mean? You know, MotoGP, uh, British World Superbike, Super, British Superbike, and you, it doesn't annoy me. I don't lose any sleep over it. It used to piss me off, mm-hmm. but yeah. uh, I just it is what it is now, and uh, you know you get on with it. And I, I've accepted that if I can't get a seat because I can't bring money, I just get on with it, enjoy my life, ride a bit of motocross when I can, and I've just bought a well, I'm saying you, but I've bought a no one one two five that I'm gonna fully restore. So uh, chuck some pistons at it, and yeah, go from there. Give us some big revs. <laughs> you know. And uh, so going back to this year, that's you know just past twenty twenty. Going into the season, we were you fully fit going into sort of pre season testing in the round one. Yeah, I was. Uh, yeah, I was uh, before I had a crash in Spain. Right, yeah. so you signed for Bill, Bill Biggs, yeah. wasn't it, on the Suzuki and Superbikes, teammates with Kyle Ride, yeah. and um, was that your first first time on a Suzuki? 
Yeah, I think so, yeah, because the, the team had flown us out on either just before, you know, the, the way you're not allowed a testing ban or whatever. Yeah. I think it was in sometime in December we flew out to Cartagena. Was it Cartagena? Yeah. And uh, for three days it did nothing but piss down <laughs> and we got, like, two laps and it was scary. Well, you the other maestro in the rain, so it wouldn't, wouldn't well, upset not you. Not like, the time, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, we'd literally done nothing. Uh, then me and Kyle decided uh, we'd drive out to Spain. So uh, I got organised everything and got a van all together and <laughs> we drove out there and uh, we just basically went at our own cost, uh, stayed out there, everything got sorted and first day was going all right, getting up to speed. Day two, uh, obviously because we got a free track day for the four days or whatever we were meant to be there, uh, we had to do some tutoring in that. So I was first session studying it was a bit you know cold cold for over there shall i say uh, a bit like dew down and that and so it was like steady session so i says all right i'll, I'll follow uh, a couple of these guys whatever and that's oh, all right so done that a couple of runs and went finished the lap out and then i says right i was just like two or three laps left if, if that so i'll like have a little go and i came round uh turn one two three four uh, I think turn seven, you know, when you're coming back towards uh, before you head up the hill? Yeah. Just as I went in Flat there, left. Yeah. Fourth gear, pin. Just touched the brake and went back down. <sighs> Bike straight out over tire wall, ended over on the other side, and I hit the tire wall. And honestly, uh, I've, I've still a sore rib from that. Uh, not a dislocated rib, but I've the ribs come out of place do you know what I mean so it, and it's still uh, I'll that's show you after it. I think that's that the definition of dislocation <laughs> that's the one place. yeah yeah that's, uh, but yeah that was that was uncomfortable that and ever since that like I just never gelled with anything I was a bit it took the edge off me do you know what I mean it, not not put fear into me but just like oh did you, you know, know why you crashed uh, yeah because I never fucking let the tires get up the damage no, again <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst thing in the world, isn't it? If you uh, crash yeah. and you don't know why, yeah. it, if you understand why, you can and, sort and of. It was one of them as as well. I, I went out there and I said to Steve, and, and you know, I was like, you know, if I crash, I wreck a bike, I'll, I'll fix it. Not, you know, you go and test, and you're Aye. never trying a hundred percent. And I like, I wasn't full on going for it that lap, but I just it boof went. As soon as I touched the brakes down, I'm like, oh. and you were covering the crash damage as well. Yeah, so I had to fit the bike as well. Mm. So. That went down well. How much did that what cost? Dam you? What, uh, what damage was to, to the bike? To, to, to be fair, uh, it wasn't too bad. The, the the Steve was sound with it. To be honest, he was like, "Look, there's a lot of stuff on it that need to replace and fix and this and the other." But uh, yeah, it was two two eight. I think it cost me. So uh, a lot of stuff, you know, that they got for free. And so he, he was sound with that side of it. To be fair, and he let me off light really. But yeah, it was kicking the balls really yeah but and then going in so going into the season we were you going in kind of a little bit battered and bruised yeah. and uh, i can't really remember the first few rounds like how, how what sort of results we yeah uh, well we'd done loads of testing at mallory but like i'd never really rid mallory much do you know what i mean and, and i never got on with you know we weren't allowed no noisy days or anything like that and the bike wasn't doing what i wanted and i just never you know everything that we were to do got put off because of obviously the COVID crack you know Aye. we never got to Spain uh, I never got proper time on the bike not not at any other circuit you know we done loads of Mallory but I just never felt comfortable uh, and then round one uh, was the first proper t time I met my crew chief and everything so got working with him and uh, that was alright done that uh, come into qualifying we were like trying to chase her tail a little bit and I had just no feeling with the bike and then qualifying, we're like there was like five minutes to go, and we made a change and went out, and I was just like, you know, when you get a change and you like, you get excited because you're like, you know, straight away you've done two corners, you're like, yeah, I can have a go with this, <laughs> and I, I came round and, and literally done one flying lap and went p ten or eleven or something like that. I was like, which was was all right for me then because it was shit at previous, but uh, and I'd like literally passed the, the board with literally seconds to go. I was like, right, I'll have a good to go with this last lap, and literally got to turn one and barrel rolled it into the <laughs> into the fence. Never and uh, snapped my shoulder. So uh, yeah, round one didn't go to plan. What what did you do to your shoulder? Exactly. Uh, 
snap the collarbone off the shoulder, I think. Oh, it, well, you look, I was about to say, you're, you're sitting it, there nice and comfy with yeah, your arm up. It's, 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 it's not good. too bad. You, you, you can... Was it the coracoid? Uh, that's complicated. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Do uh, did you get a plate or something? Or? Uh, yeah, I went down to... Is it below Manchester? Yeah. Uh, was it Mr. Fung? Dr. Funk. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Funk. Dr. Uh, Funk. Fun- yeah. Sorry, Funk. Funk. Yeah. Funk. Yeah. He's like the top shoulder surgeon in the country. Uh, like, like uh, this is what the house built. It's the arm short uh, arm and shoulder clinic, that isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One, yeah. So yeah. Uh, obviously Steve had sil- used to have Sylvan Gentoli riding for him and yeah. Sylvan uh, Steve said here, speak with him and he he'll tell you who what to do and this, that and the other and uh the the my young doctor had said, Look, you know, you can let it heal it'll not be great but you know so I can't remember what the time frame was and I was like that doesn't sound too good and then mm. Dr. Funk was like right it needs this 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 but it's uh, seven and a half grand <laughs> I'm like so, Jesus so, what? Uh, yeah so I literally got it operated on uh, within I think the Saturday because it was racing every two weeks then wasn't it mm-hmm. so I had crashed on the Saturday uh at Donington, the two weeks after that was Snetterton, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. So then, I got operation on the Saturday morning uh, of yeah, of Snetterton, and then uh, I couldn't believe how fast you came back. Yeah, two and a half weeks, seven and a half grand. That's how he got back so quick. My yeah. giddy aunt. <laughs> yeah, cause I, I remember. You, I you remember you, sounding about a coker though. I remember you injury. Don't have to I remember grand. injury, and then I remember um, seeing you out on a motocross bike and just thinking that is like incredible. Uh, yeah, like uh, I, I'd, like I had uh, I have a fella Ian Dixon. Uh, have you ever heard of him? Yeah, he's yeah. over your direction, isn't he? Mm-hmm. And uh, I had him come over to do a little bit of laser treatment, this, that, and the other, and. And uh, he says, you'll not need anything else. Y- you'll be all right in a couple of weeks of this. And I'm like, that's a bit premature, that. You know what I mean? And, and I didn't really do nothing. I had done everything to sort of be sensible with it without hurting it, you know what I mean? But I was like proper making an effort. Mm-hmm. And because uh, I was like, I don't like seeing anybody else on my bike, do you? Aye. And uh, two and a half weeks, because uh, obviously lockdown, my boss that I work for, uh, his kids have motocross bikes and that. So down at a farm like a couple of miles from my work uh, we built a motocross track you know and they're like hey, there's a digger just play away and you know we kept extending it every couple of weeks and making it bigger and <laughs> the kids so, are getting uh, yeah. faster and faster and faster so uh, Adrian my boss goes I was just show- asking a bit of crack with shoulder and that and I was like yeah I'm going to come down uh, at the weekend and uh, you know or it was a Wednesday night or something he says uh, he says I don't think that's a good idea and I'm like no 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 it's good like I said you can do press ups this that and the other and it's a bit different to riding motorbike <laughs> so I was like you know what it is I was like oh, I'm, I'm only going to come down and ride uh, around the field you know flat field see how it feels and I re- literally got on it and think you know when you get on you think oh I don't know if this feels alright so I got on I was like it's not too bad rid around the flat field and then uh, I was like you know giving it a bit of uh, break and then I was like that feels alright so literally had to go round the track but like didn't jump nothing didn't do nothing and I was like and then <laughs> a lap later you know jump go for the jump hit it a little bit I'm like this feels mint this and I literally by the end of the night honestly I could not believe I was riding it fully committed everything it got sore after 20 minutes to be fair but that's full hold, commitment holding a motocross bike a 450 Suzuki for 20 minutes I was like yeah that'll do mm-hmm. and then uh, I think the that was that was two weeks after that so I missed then what was after Snedden whatever I missed another one and then in between that round and Olden the next round I rid uh, at Donington a day uh, for like a track day or whatever and uh, it hurt it, like it really hurt uh, you know because Donington's so sore and breaks and that mm-hmm. and, like the that pressure was, like, oh. yeah like I'd done a session I'm like eh. Steve was like how is it and I'm like riding like a complete family to be fair but uh, I was getting round do you know what I mean and I was like by the end of the day he's like how is it I was like yeah not too bad and I, you know I was driving home and I was like thinking you know arm on steering wheel and all the rest and I was like ooh that's hurt you know oh, and I, then I sort of thought right if I can do that Olden Parks and as hard as it is changing the direction everything I was like Donington's the worst for breaking on and that's when it mainly hurts so uh, we just put like a big pad in front of the tank 
for when it was breaking and I just literally leaned against it and that that was that you know and I don't think I'd done too bad a job for coming back but uh, like you say that's a quick turn round yeah. that. that is a very very so quick I, I turn think was it four weeks after the op that's when her first road no, four I, weeks that yeah. is do, do you know Super in, in the past uh, I've, all, I've had a few <laughs> operations and stuff and it, I've always kind of just I've never had a private operation yeah um what what was your experience compared like from what you've had in the past? What was it? Do you feel like the um, you know that the seven thousand yeah, was <laughs> worth it? Seven and a half thousand. Yeah. Obviously, it's it, it it got you in faster, yeah. so that was a massive priority for racing. But in terms of the the you know what what was different about it? Just uh, like you, you know, it's like the NHS is is a great that we have NHS and yeah. under the circumstances and like my sister's an NHS and she'll probably listen to this, so she'll probably give me She's a sound off, but. Uh, <laughs> You know they they are great for what they do, but you know like you, you you just for private you go in you get treated you're done you're out. Do you Aye. know what I mean? The NHS is like such a funny and on of you know you need to come here this day for this and then go back the next day for this. I literally went. Uh, I rang Doctor Funk and says, "Right here, I've Best done this." Best name ever. I, I get a smile every time you say that. And one. Uh, mm. like literally sent him me scans and he goes, "Right, no worries." Uh, that was like. Oh, whatever Mon- rang him Monday morning after the crash that's what it was and he goes right come down tomorrow morning come- went down tomorrow morning and then he says right I'll book you in for the next Saturday I was like that was that done and uh, that was the first time he could get me in was the Saturday after so I was like right and then like to swallow of paying seven and a half grand for a bloody operation and, and like it was actually I wasn't going to do it and I was just like literally sort of take it on the chin maybe see by the end of the year if I could ride a bike and uh, went up to try and sober my motorhome one day and Bertie says whatever you do whether you never race a bike again he says Get you will surgery. regret it because if you don't he says your shoulder in later life will give you hell and I'm glad I did now even you know what I mean mm-hmm. you look, honestly you look really comfortable well, yeah, it's, 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 like here it, it's no bother like you know in the cold mornings and that oh, you know if I you're out running and that and, and like because I've always struggled with a shoulder anyway, but like when you you get to the end of the run, you're like, oh, you know, you, you become aware of it. Mm-hmm. But uh, other than that, it's it's no bother. It don't annoy me. Mm-hmm. Apart from when my kids trying to swing off it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, go and so going back to so your wallet. You, you, oh, that's heavy. you got back to uh, to suit bikes at Ul- Ulton Park, mm-hmm. and then we were, there was I think that was around four, wasn't it? So we only had Donington and then Brands Hatch. Yeah. Donington, you were back on Superbike, I think, yeah. weren't you? And then for the final round, back to uh, Superstock. Yeah. What what was the stock like? How did you go from Superbike to Superstock, sort of mid season? Uh, it was not really my call to be fair uh, I, I was one of them I wasn't producing the results costing a lot of money to ride a super bike when I was riding like a fucking family uh, there was nothing else to it you know what I mean did you see that and was that purely because uh, of the injury yeah like uh, not, uh, really, uh, well. not really to be fair it was a bit I had no feeling with the bike do you know what I mean I was told it was the same as the other twos and you know it wasn't do you know what I mean uh, as in it just wasn't set up the same or uh, no, same equipment was, same or? equipment right. you know what I mean uh, and I, I, as when Kyle had obviously a fallen out with them at the last round sorry uh, Kyle did yeah because Kyle obviously was teammate and then Gino had stepped in for me so he stayed on board didn't he right on the okay. superbike right so then when uh, so did you had a fallen out with Kyle or uh, no 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 uh, when Kyle had a fallen out with the team I, d- uh, I didn't know about that. Right, because obviously the then at, at the last round, Kyle had obviously, uh, obviously everyone came aware that he had jumped ship to OMG. And was that why they fell out? Yeah. Right. So uh, there was a bit of uh, heat, heated discussion in the team. And uh, I was I obviously having the crack with Kyle and what I'd been through. And, and, and Kyle was like, yeah, well, they've took my parts off this bike and this, that. you know what I mean? And I'm not, not getting into it, but, uh, and I was like, I just turned around and says, like, now you know how I feel. I've rid that fucking dog all year when you've been on a good bike. And he's like, all right. <laughs> I just left it <laughs> yeah, like that. No, and, <laughs> and here, I, I I had a massive fallout with him in the last round, but, you know. Did you? Yeah. Uh, because of the situation. Yes. Because of going to Superstock. And uh, I'd put something, I'd give my social media away to a fellow that looks after Keith Stewart. And uh, 
you know, he had AO, he'd sent something across to put out on the, because everyone was asking questions, why I'd gone to Superstock. And I weren't going to lie. I didn't tell the whole truth, but, uh, you know, I'd literally uh, said, I can't remember what he said or put out, but it was well, well put, to be fair, better than Hi. I would have put it, because I would have told the truth, to this, be fair. This is the crack. Dad. Yeah, it, it but is. he put it out, walked down to the sh- uh, garage Friday morning, you know, have a bit of crack, get called into the, the office and, and all the rest, and uh, I just took it and took and took and then all of a sudden I just lost my head and uh, we had a massive falling out but to be fair after we had the fallout everything was cool because I, I, I laid everything on the table do you know oh. what I mean and I got emotional because like you know what I mean uh, I was being deemed that I didn't want to ride a super stock and I'm like I wouldn't have driven six and a half bloody hours to drive a super you know to ride a super stock bike they ran back to brands obviously if I didn't want to so uh, we had a mass falling out, but we, we got it sorted, do you know what I mean? I, uh, this was all within 40 minutes of the first session. So uh went and got changed and jumped on a bike and done an okay job. Had a bit of break field in the race, but other than that, I was, I was happy enough, to be fair. And I think with the whole year that I've had, losing a bit of motivation, uh, you know, not having the right feeling, I wouldn't have... I wasn't as fit as I wanted to be after the, obviously the up and you know losing time to train because of the injury and the way I, I wanted to train and I don't here Steve you know I haven't fell out with them we're cool do you know what I mean and yeah. uh, he done what he needed to do and I've I've went a separate way and and that's what it is you know I mean yeah. that's that's racing and I wouldn't like to fall out with somebody uh, over you know night really to be fair mm-hmm. uh, at the end of the day they want to run a team they want to do the best they can and good luck to them do you know what I mean but uh, that's just the way it is isn't it how, how do you think their line up this year will do with Gino and Danny Kent uh, I think oh yeah Danny Kent yeah G- Gino I think uh, would be a good bet to be fair mm-hmm. you know he, he had was, some real strong rides yeah. at the end of last year didn't he, he? he wasn't mm-hmm. on the bike that long and and uh, he's obviously a talented kid do you know what I mean does he know how long has uh, Gino been on the circuit then was he on for OMG last year? No, oh, I'm mixing my riders up here. OMG a few years ago, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he, he knows he the circuit. Sorry, yes, yeah, I yeah, knows what, the circuit. What did he do in 19? Do you know, so he did OMG, f- that was 2018, wasn't it, on the Superbike? Yeah. Oh, right. And that was so after a spell in, like, Mo2 and all kinds. Right, yeah. Came back to the UK. Uh, last year, did he... It was Bill Base, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, because he, he, he had a ride with OMG or something, that's right, didn't it? And then it fell through because he wanted to try and run a super stock team or something for himself. Right. I knew but, there was a connection with OMG at that point. Yeah, yeah, but then, obviously, he filled in for me. And, and to be fair to him, he'd done a really good job, you know, mm. for not being on it long. So, uh, fair, fair play to him. I think he'll do well. Uh, Danny, I think, being on Superbike 4, I think, did he... When you had the follow up, fallout with Mavano or whatever you call them, yeah, uh, I didn't follow them, but yeah, oh, um, right. uh, yeah, he um, he stepped in at the end of last year. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the end of two thousand and eighteen. Yeah. He did one round on the Halsell bike, yeah. and he also rode around for uh, Qingdao and on the MV. Dave oh, Tyson right, on yeah. the yeah, that didn't t- the MV didn't take off, did it? Uh, no, 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 no that's been all right. Yeah. The, you know, the bike didn't seem the gel, did it? So, no, yeah, and, it I, and have you seen Luke Mossy's riding for that team next year? But oh, on the Kawasaki, he? yeah, yeah. so he's oh, on the Kawasaki, right, he's, uh, like, bike devil Kawasaki, yeah. and um, I th- yeah, <laughs> like it, it's one of them. It's uh, Luke, I, I rate him as quite a good rider, to be fair. You Brilliant, know what I mean? Yeah. And Can you remember I, that year when he was leading the championship and when uh, yeah. Haslam was teammate? Did he do yeah. the double at Brands Did that the time, double yeah. and he was... Right, yeah. yeah it was, it, that's it, another one that and, looking like the next big thing. and that, yeah. shit, that race weekend as well didn't he not do, that no, weekend no, no, but he's, no, but he's yeah. never really been the same since he had yeah. that big crash yeah, big, big where he big touched, crash, he touched he? the white line on the oh, start finish it? line oh, and uh, yeah. went into the wall and ever since oh, then he, he went yeah. from being like a dominant force in yeah. super bikes to be he was still a, don't get us wrong he's a brilliant rider and he's had yeah. some great rides but uh, he never never really worked out with OMG and then because uh, he had a big crash at Snedderton one as well did he have a break fear at the end of the back straight or something and he had to jump off it like that absolutely flat that in that was on the Kawasaki as well yeah right mm-hmm. so like it's difficult you know what I mean and uh, I think was he OMG two years wasn't he yes yes, yes he, he did two years, two years. OMG mm-hmm. yeah so like uh, one year on the Suzuki one year oh, on the BM yeah. mm-hmm. but yeah it's, it's here he might jump back on the Kawasaki and go well you yeah. know what I mean it's things that he 
maybe used to and always has and it's hard to know yeah do you know what I mean it is a question like you know um you were speaking briefly about Kyle Rye then you both came like as far as I can remember you both came from a similar background as far as the 600 and I'm going to bore every listener who's listening to this and watching on YouTube but what I find really interesting is that transaction period because like we have for example you've got um Rory Skinner stepping up from 600s up into super bikes like was Kyle very similar? You know, those first couple of testing out sessions, was it like, did it remind you of how you transitioned? And To be fair, he's, he's a really mature kid for, for him, do you know what I mean? And he's bags of talent. And, uh, you know, actually, I, I, I can't remember where it was, but uh, Josh Brooks made a comment about, you know, if Josh, if Kyle had been on a, a more, uh, what was it, a, a bike that stayed finished, or I can't remember, he made some comment about the bike failure or whatever, but... He, he was worried about Kyle. Do you know what I mean? And I thought, you know what, that, that's a fair comment to go from Kyle, Josh Kyle, Brooks. Because like, Kyle the, did the first couple of rounds and he did an outstanding job and then the bikes unfortunately packed yeah, in on him. But the, He was unlucky because, you know, of all the time there, I never had a bike failure, do you know what I mean? Or, yeah. or Gino didn't. And he, he was just unlucky. Yes. He's maybe riding it too fast. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> <He> was, <laughs> oh, no, but like more the like the transition toward from 600 to 1,000. Because, yes. you, you, you know, it's always that, oh, it's too much, too much. But you see... Kyle, Kyle's proof that he, he stepped up rapidly. Yeah. Um, you massively proven that point. It's, yeah, I'm just, it's just be interesting to see how Kyle gets on with the, the BMW, BMW and yeah. obviously teammates with Bradley Ray yeah. as well. I, I think the Suzuki suited Kyle with the way he he rid the bike. Do you know what I mean? Uh, whereas I think the Suzuki you could ride it more like a 600 style. Uh, just from the way I rode it, uh, you know, was trying to go in park it set it up and drive it out and it just maybe wasn't suiting that pure style whereas Kyle was maybe you know his corner speed was ridiculous I've like, seen I've seen that lad in a pit bike he's yeah. so so quick yeah. and and <laughs> to be fair to him like uh, I hope he can transition to the BM as well do you know what I mean but yeah uh, yeah I, ho- I hope he does but the BM I, d- I don't know what well obviously I read it the first stage of the new BM, but I don't know how much it's changed. But uh, yeah, I hope to be fair to him. I hope he uh, continues. No, definitely. He's, de- he's de- <laughs> no. It's going to be an exciting season whenever it kicks off. And yeah. have you, so, have you obviously you won't have any like definite testing plans because you don't know what you're riding no. yet. But have you got any? Uh, are you just sort of riding motocross and stuff until yeah. the season starts? Yeah, like literally the last time I rode a bike, I think was uh, probably the last round last year, or maybe I've done a bit of motocross since, but. Uh, yeah, literally. Hopefully, within this week, I'll hopefully find out of what's happening. Uh, either Kazaki or you know, if we can get some money towards a Honda job. And to be fair to everyone on social media, they've gone mental trying to set up GoFundMe pages, and you know, and that's brilliant. That it it don't sit that great with me. I I don't like a GoFundMe page because I don't. It, at the end of the day, I want, it's me that wants to ride a bike. I don't want everyone else a cost just for me to ride a bike. As much as an, and a nice, I appreciate that. It's just like not really bit, your style. Yeah, it's, it's a bit big into me. Uh, here, if someone wants to do it, fair enough, and hand me ten grand. But at the end of the day, if 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 I don't go racing, what happens? Do you mm. know what I mean? And then people will be maybe calling me for what have you done with my money? Do you, you know what I mean? And that and that's the only reason I don't like it. Uh, I appreciate it, but just. Just not for me. Yeah, fair no. enough. But you're you're ve- like no, no 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 you've worked very hard for it. I was about to say you're very lucky, but you you've put yourself in a situation. But you have won it four times, and it's like you've got you know you've got nothing to prove to no one. But <laughs> yeah. it'd be, it would be great to see on the grid with this lad. Oh, I, I, yeah. I think it'll be it'll be nice because obviously you know Cooper's coming back in. There. He's going to be back on the beer from I believe. Heard, have you heard anything from Coops? No, no, he's uh, been very quiet. You know, he obviously had a big big. Big, yeah. big, big crash and did a lot of damage to the bottom of his leg. And like, uh, hope, yeah, it'd be great to see him back on the grid without a doubt. I think he's had something similar to me, hadn't he? Uh, I think he had has had he rods or plates or something like that in. Yeah, something, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is not good, but uh, I, here I've only heard that he's possibly going that way. And is Taylor McKenzie possibly going to be a teammate to him? <laughs> Taylor, will, he'll definitely be in stock thousand. I'm not sure yeah. whether I pr- presumably with me, oh, but I'm not, yeah. I'm not 100% so sure. Like, on there's the because Richards, he's been a champion in it, hasn't he? Yeah. It. Taylor's been champion. Obviously yourself. I'd like to be in it. You know, two times champ. Uh, so there's five that, championships. But when you're talking about the depth of field, look, that's Looking like serious. Alex Olsen's going to be oh, back. Yeah. Back from injury Alex as well. Olsen, yeah. And back in stock thousand. How is he now? 
Uh, I haven't heard much from yeah. him, but they, they put a post out the other day saying the gyms were closed, but he had like a swinging arm, so it looked like he's doing some work out with a wow. swinging arm. But uh, yeah, the cause I think he had a serious injury, and um, uh, yeah. it's. Uh, do you know the last podcast that we recorded? It, it it isn't actually out yet. I know you're working your way through. Keith's in the the fifties, so he's still got plenty to enjoy. But um, <laughs> well, the, well, you know, <laughs> the one that the one that we recorded last week, we were talking about. Um, so we had Joe Ackroyd on and we're talking about you the sort of got to the Joe Ackroyd ones yet not yet but Rain we're talking crack. about sort of injured injured riders and when you when you leave the racetrack um Joe's look basically looking to set up like some sort of charity organization to help um injured riders and yeah. put like a sort of a network of people together to he- that that can help yeah. so and the, the idea is that you know when you're injured and you go home there'll be an organization in touch that can put you in touch with like shoulder surgeons you can yeah. if you if you've spanned your leg you could speak to somebody that's spanned their leg and kind of talk and yeah, yeah. Be, loads of good ideas right. and stuff and that's something that you'd never really he- hear about until you say like read people's autobiographies and yeah. maybe like chat shows like this but you, you you've obviously went through some serious injuries yeah. and people don't think about you know like getting addicted to painkillers and some like real deep and dark places yeah. that you can sort of get and, to and that's the same as myself I, I how hate many drugs it. are you on at the minute then <laughs> no unfortunately <laughs> well, I think I need to start <laughs> I'm actually watching Breaking Bad at the minute to be fair and it's it, they're cooking meth no one think I might start that I thought the same way you do we're on series uh, it's starting series four tonight oh brilliant I was wondering so. why the Winnebago turned up outside <laughs> the car park here we go it's just <laughs> cooking kids <laughs> like smoke pouring but, out the yeah, roof there uh, it's <laughs> it's a, it's hard to know you know what i mean it's uh what what's the worst time for you for you like injury wise i think uh the the legs was do you know what i mean uh the worst part was me missus having to look after me do you know what i mean uh coming home uh my little one looking to play with me do you know what i mean and me hardly been able to tell you know I couldn't walk up the stairs. I couldn't do now. Do you know what I mean? I was literally sliding on my ass everywhere for a bit, and it didn't last too long, to be fair, because of what NHS and that can do now. Obviously, put uh, steel rods, and I think it was a week and a half, and I, I walked out of hospital. Uh, not literally walked out of hospital, but I had to walk to get out of hospital. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so in pain? No. <laughs> no. No. I'm fine. But uh, but yeah, it's it's that was that was dark. Uh, that was. Literally, uh, I think. I had a phone call, I can't remember how long after, with uh, Philip Neal, and I told him that uh, I'd never wanted to ride a bike again, this, that, and the other. I was proper, like, against it, and I didn't want to hurt myself because of this, this, and this. And, and yeah, but I, I don't ever like to stay on painkillers because, like you say, you can get addicted and this, that, and the other. And, and I don't like... The addiction for me is bikes, and that's it. Do you know what I mean? I don't like addicted to anything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. I had come off painkillers as soon as I got out of hospital. I got out of hospital on the, a week and a half after I broke the legs. And then uh, two days after that, Ian Dixon came to me uh, to give me laser treatment and that. And then two days after that, I had no painkillers. I was like, it was a bit rough, to be fair. Uh, probably should have took them another week because of to try and sleep at night. But I just literally wanted off them. Because as soon as you come off them, uh, you know, the pain of the day, you, you know how your pain is. Do you know what I mean? Whereas when you have taken them all the time and relying on them, you don't know what your pain is because it's not there. Disguise. You know, yeah. yeah. So, like, it's just easier that if it's there, then you can manage it within your brain. Yeah. Have you got have you got Ian Dixon on speed dial? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're watching the telly live on Eurosport <laughs> going, hey, good race, son, good race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But no, he's... Uh, it's handy because he comes comes to you and it do you know what I mean and he, he does a good job and uh, I've yeah. used him before he's he does a lot of he, his main work is with horses isn't it oh, horse is it? injuries yeah oh right <laughs> Did you not know that? Oh no! The, yeah, second, the, se- the probably, second best thing, motorcycle races. He probably did tell me, but I just zone out. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? Is um yeah, it's like there's a place in uh, Norwich, uh, Brian Simpson, oh, yeah, and yeah. The, a lot of people go to him. It's a similar yeah. sort of thing. It's um it's like the laser. Well, there's the laser treatment, and then also there's the magnetic therapy, yeah. where you kind of put like these magnets around you, like. W- yeah, whatever injured yeah. bit and it's like um, there's something to do with stem cells isn't there so yeah. stem cell the stem cells that are in your bone marrow in your leg 
the it sort of releases uh, stem cells to get to the injured that, bit. Yeah. So even if you've got like an injured finger, you would put the magnetic thing around your bone, uh, uh, leg bone, yeah. to get the the stem cells to your finger to heal your yeah, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's weird, but to be fair, it, it helped me massively. Do you do, you do um, it works? It works. Do you do the hyperbaric chambers as well? Uh, I never, I've never actually done the hyperbaric. I went to uh, what was the uh, the not the uh, what is the ice like an ice bath? Not an ice bath, but it's an ox. Oh, I can't even remember. The, it's not hyperbaric chamber. Uh, I can't remember the name. Of sure. it. Uh, <laughs> He's getting dumped in yeah. Lake Windermere <laughs> here for the crack. Uh, I can't remember what it is to be fair, but it's like literally you stack. Hi, is it a Danny Buckins done it recently? Right. Uh, Danny Buck. He's on for tass, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it. Sorry, and I seen him in it the other day because uh, it's apparently a lot of trainers not use it because it takes your body. It's basically like you step in a chamber and you close the chamber around you, and you, you're. Is it up to your neck, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I've seen and that. Yeah, you, it doesn't. It's cold, but it do, it's they take you to a minus hundred and seventy. But it doesn't. Uh, obviously, is it called water therapy? No, not cold. No, water. no, it's like. Uh, uh, it's, is it? Uh, I oh, can't okay. mind on. Deep freeze, but in a you, tube. Yeah. Everyone's going to be going on Danny Buckins Instagram. Yeah. I, I, I have a check on that. Have oh, a check yeah. on that. But, but yeah, it it helped me. I went and broke a legs, and I've done a lot of that. To be fair, I went. Uh, I've done a couple of weeks of every single day to Blackburn. I uh, went, and uh, it was only an hour and a half. Do you know what I mean? But it it was a, a big step for me as well. So uh, if I was anything injured again i'd probably do that over again straight away mm -hmm. because it was it was expensive but uh at the end of the day if it gets you back a bit quicker and and gets, gets you back to work get making a living and everything like that it's it. it's yeah. worth doing i need, I need to get your information from that because i've never yeah. heard of it but we'll, uh, we'll have to have a belt in it but i tell you what like before we wrap things up i tell you what cryotherapy well done, that man. What is it? Cryotherapy. Cryo cryo <laughs> I've never heard of that. I'll have to look into it. Honestly, it's mega. Even just for uh, you know, after training and that, mm -hmm. uh, there's none around here. And I've literally, uh, when I was doing it down Blackburn, I actually considered starting a business with it. And I talked to Bertie about doing it actually because there's nothing around Penrith with it. It's it's unbelievable. Like literally, it's a game changer. I think. Uh, and I would, if it was closer, I would. I would even though it's expensive I do it once a week just tell refresh yourself it's like really uh, oh yeah how how much is the infrastructure do you think to set it up oh. how much is one session like uh, for Blackburn here oh, I can't even remember it was colossal ballpark uh, figure like 100 quid uh, for is it like literally you only do it for 5 minutes or something it was something like 40 or 50 quid or something like that uh, which Keith, I think we've got a good little business coming here. So <laughs> I get rid of the crystal meth in the Winnipeg. Just put a couple of Cairo tubes there. Be a bit more legal. Uh, uh, just a touch, just a touch. Yeah. But no, you tell, one question that I've got, and I, I'm, I'm almost sure I've asked you this before uh, about uh, road racing. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people get to the position in short circuit racing where, no. where the. Um, for example, Hickman. Hickman was at a point where he wasn't quite he wasn't making a living from British shooter bikes he's he you know he was getting sort of he'd had a good go at it but he wasn't you know running at the front yeah. not making a living and he f went over to the the Isle of Man TT and started road racing and he's ended up making a very lucrative career from the, the road racing side of yeah. things F uh, for somebody in, that's been in your position and like you said you've won these four championships and you you haven't really seen the financial benefit of that it must have. It must be a, a, or must have been a big pull at some point for you. You know, to think. Well, you, you could maybe go for the northwest, for example, yeah. and earn a few quid. Uh, you know, it, have you ever came close to doing it? Yeah, very close. Uh, to the point of chatting to organisers, uh, or not? Not to that point, but I, like for me, just even to think over it because my dad always said from day to day, when like he bought me a bike in two thousand ten R six, and he says. I'll support you, but if I ever, if you ever go road racing, that's want it. nothing to do with it. I'm like, yeah, fair enough. And I genuinely never had an interest in it. I, re I respect you and others that do it, but <laughs> like, it's just not my cup of tea. I'm bad enough on bloody circuits, never mind roads. Like, like we said before, walls. <laughs> that's that's a different. There's a dream. Of fish. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, uh, Andy 18 won the Superstock, and uh, I 
you know, with Fort Tyco, just fought automatically. Yeah, no bother going to Superbike this that, and the other. And I'm, you you know, racing like it's never as politically correct and this that and the other. And it's never as simple as just winning championship. Yeah, you you're nominated to go to Superbike and excuse me. And I and genuinely thought about doing the Northwest because if I'd done the Northwest for the like a Tyco, then it would secure my seat in the. Uh, for the British Superbike because I, I think I spoke with Celia or Glenn Irwin about it as well and and, he, and they were like yeah you, you'd be good at this and that and the other and I'm like you would be you know and, I'm and gonna say you, you <laughs> yeah, would be but like it's just it, it's such a not you know my cousins did it and you know and to be fair done, done alright at it but it's just like uh, it's just a I would be doing it for the wrong reasons. You know, I was, I was literally just about to say, yeah, like the, the. I, um, I think to do it, you've got to want yeah, to do it in the first and place. And I think that's why I, I respect the ones that do it. But I think that's why it's sad to see a lot of kids that go to it just because maybe they don't make it in BSB. Do you know what I mean? And to see them going just to try and get some money out of it, it it's horrible because they're like a you know Malachi Mitchell Thomas. Do you know what I mean? I raced Supermoto with him when he was like in the smaller class and this and that and the other. And then you know to get killed at it. And uh, here, if they want to do it, fair enough. And he he might have been doing it for you know the right reasons, but you know just to see someone come to it and and you know in a sense nearly go too quick too soon. Do you know what I mean? And, and then be took away from it. And it it's you know but yeah it was a big consideration. I spoke to my dad and everything about it, and uh, he was actually all for it. Which surprised me, to be fair. I bet that yeah, was a shock. Yeah, and I, I think that sort of oh, give me the shivers, and it's just giving me the shivers <laughs> right now. Uh-huh. You know, because uh, like literally, for me, dad yeah, to don't say do that, this, don't do this, don't do this. Yeah, yeah go on then. Yeah, and and then I was like, oh, and then I, I just I literally just said, no, you know what? If if it doesn't come off and I don't get a super bike ride, well then it is what it is, you know. And it was hard to swallow because I obviously wanted that sewer bike seat and okay fair enough I got it in the end but uh, you know it came with literally if I maybe had a went for the northwest I could have got a few quid out of it and this and that and the other you know what I mean put a bit of a you know I'll do northwest for you and and this and that and the other but like I ended up getting a sewer bike ride and no money in my pocket no nothing and, and I was like you know so you end up you're working around the clock to live you know what I mean and, and to be fair uh, I've only really, well, not only really realized, but like I should have been doing better work, you know, having people fetch sponsorship into me and this, that, and the other. But uh, it's it's one of them learning process, and mm. but yeah. I tell you what, we've been it's it's a lot. You almost forget how much has actually happened between the first time we had you on the pod to this point. So Glenn Irwin at this point, before on the first interview, wasn't doing the TT, wasn't riding for Honda yeah. or anything. How do you think now? How do you think you'll fetch at the TT? Uh, like me and Glenn's had a run in the past and we actually get a run really, really well now to yeah. be fair do you know what I mean and, and I think both of us just grew up you know what I mean I, I was obviously battling with Andrew and we had a run ins and this and that but I, I just I think you know it, Glenn wants to go and do well doesn't he do you know what I mean I, I, me personally uh, I think he you know he'll want to go and be the fastest newcomer I, I just hope that doesn't have consequences do you know what I mean I, I respect him and he has so much talent and he's done an amazing job in the Honda last year and again you know he will this year I'm sure but I just I hope he doesn't go too quick too soon but you see the good thing about Glenn Irwin though he's, he's not exactly a shock product is he and no, as far as roads, you know, he's won Macau Grand Prix, Northwest's two yeah. hundreds, and he's done the Ulster. So he's he's in my, in, actually in my eyes, he's a, he is a roads man. Yeah, not not like fair, full through. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like you know when you think of the product that comes along, it's not like uh, I'm trying. Let's just Gino Ria going. Yeah, yeah. let's have a crack at the TD. Like Jesus, what, this he's is not going in blind, blind, is he? He's uh, yeah, go, going in far true, from yeah. blind. Now. I think yeah. I'm looking like it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Just, it really will. TT's a bit different though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? I think like I know Macau is what it is, but uh, and the Northwest is, and and he's what has he won three or four Northwest now, aren't he, Glenn? A consecutive, he's I think, isn't he? Uh, yeah. He's a he's a daft question. Being a, a like an Irishman through and through, you know, to the blood. Do you reckon he'll still come back? We've talked about this all the way yeah. down on the drive. I I don't know really. I don't. Uh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because is it 
I don't even really know much about it to be but honest. But see, not many people do. That's that's the other side of it. It's just with the atmosphere that everyone's in and the way road racing is. To be blunt, road racing is struggling as yeah. a sport. But it's just like what once almost something fails, it it stays a failure at the moment as far as you know yeah. big events are concerned. But I don't I don't see why it should be. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. roads, like it should be eligible to go more. So do you know what I mean? I know the TT. There's that many people there. That's fair enough. But yeah. the like the Ulster now. You know, it's spread over how many miles of track. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's there's fails. You know, I mean, the people are. It shouldn't. I shouldn't see a problem with it running. Do you know what I mean? And trying to get back going. And I I, I totally I totally agree. We, we we are both sitting here. All three of us are sitting here. Go. We do not know the political ins and yeah, outs of it. But you think, what? Well, why? Why? Why is this not? working why is this not happening I'm devastated I've never really I've been to a northwest a few times now I've never been to a TT never been to Ulster have you not no uh, do, do you actually pay to go to a road race or do you just rock up and, it, like as in a, a spectator the, the Ulster Grand Prix was one of the only ones where well, you, pay, you pay to well, watch the Ulster Grand Prix right um, how does that work logistically oh, no, no. it's along a road oh no no so it's like you know like paddock access used to pay like you know you get gates to go in and like program sales yeah. it's like these events do cost money to get going it's mm. like same with the North West you know yeah. when you go into the paddock you've got to have a certain wristband I mean, do you know like say if you're in a random field watching it how do the uh, oh no you don't you, you can do that for free. Are you sure? Well, I can go to a field, I. I might get shot by the farmer, but you know, you, <laughs> you can go to a field. But in essence, but it's not like a closed, it's not like a closed gate situation like open I parks it, and I stuff like that. You can the, theoretically walk across a field and go watch. And, I know it's like that at the northwest and stuff. I, I was always under the assumption that at Dulster you had to pay to, to watch it. Not, not like um for like grandstand passes and stuff. But you see, that's probably one of the damaging things because the show has got bigger and better, but that costs more money. It's yeah. like what we're talking about, you know, getting yeah. structure into go racing. But you know, yeah. Yes, you can go watch anywhere on the circuit, and that is the appeal: is the fact that you can sit this close to a rider and watch him go around a corner. But there's a financial cost to that. Mm. But you think there is not a road racer alive, or if you, yeah. if you, you know, my God, I'm sitting here open the Ulster goes. But if you ever go to watch, you'll go. This is just. Yeah. Do you know, insane an- it's another fantastic. another of the championships that you've won that we haven't really touched on is the the super sport looking ahead for the for the next year the, the cha- engine, changing yeah. the rules quite a lot um your triumphs are coming in with the 765s the Ducatis yeah. are eligible now um you've got like a there's been a bit of a changing of the guard in terms of like the older riders have all come through and there's, they're all new, sort of new new yeah. like kids really um or a lot of them anyway the, the, uh is there any <laughs> Um, what's your opinions on you know who's who's going to be the men to beat? Do you I, think this year? I think uh, I think the Colin Appleyard team runs an outstanding outfit. To be fair, they've been uh, unbeaten for uh, four years. Four years it? now, yeah. You know, and uh, I think we'll take some beating. Yeah, but uh, th- in a sense, they've got two sort of apprentices. Do you know what I mean? Because uh, is it Keel uh, or Reese Irwin? Is Reese Reese Irwin, and. Uh, you know, he's came from winning an odd race in Super Stock 600. Got loads of pedigree, obviously. Yeah, uh, he's a mega you know, and, and and obviously uh, Robin's seen a, a talent in him, which is fair play to him. You know, and rather than sticking with sort of old guns, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is nice to see. Uh, and then obviously Bradley Perry. Uh, he's a local to you, practically. Yeah, there you go. I, I genuinely think he could be one to watch. He, you know, sort of like you know on his old Yamaha. I actually, what a job. Uh, it was because my uh, one of my my boss that I work for, Adrian, uh, he actually is friends with his dad, or, or there's some connection anyway. Aye. And he was he actually showed me pictures, and they're the building the bike on the <laughs> bloody <laughs> kitchen table. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> I think that's mega. That yeah, like the go, lads hungry for yeah, it. The whole family. And, and you know to to do that on an old like an old knacker. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> to, to, and then he'll not know himself when he gets on one of these things. Mm-hmm. You know, like probably. I don't know. Mine, whenever I read for Apple Yards, was one four four one four five. So like with the new bike, I know the engine's similar, but there's better uh, air intake and stuff like that. So it'll be it'll not be far off one fifty. I'd imagine now. And That's like, crazy. Th- yeah, like they are little mini super bikes. They're so fun to ride. Mm. Just as we're speaking about R six engines, I uh, oh, Dom trying to give a quick. Oh, pl- Dom's trying to get fl- to, to flog one. Well. <laughs> 
I was supposed to ride for like a, a team, and then anyway that that the political blah blah. But I like I was promised if you buy a spare engine, we'll we'll do more racing. I bought the spare engine, all in bits, Vance nine head, everything like that, full super sport thing, and I'm gonna you know keep the powder dry situation and yeah. go in full on, turn up the TD Northwest on a rocket ship. You know what I mean? That was the plan, Proper. but. Uh, Unfortunately, that's uh, plans have changed, oh. and I've got this R6 engine to sail in there because I'm not that registered or anything like that. I've had to pull, pull like I've had to buy brand new this, brand new that, uh, full that, and everything. But if there's anyone out there, or Keith, if you want to buy an engine, that'd be, that'd be absolutely Basically, amazing. Dom, yeah. Dom's got eight eight thousand seven hundred quid in this engine, but the, the so it's not even turned. It's not even t- it. Oh. It's all brand new parts. So he's, he's wanting to recoup as much. He's yeah. not expecting eight thousand seven hundred yeah, back, but he'd get as much as possible. So if anyone listens, to that I'm one desperate. Yeah. I'm desperate because I need. Oh God, get the violin out, Chrissy. Yeah, but that, it's like I need. I need that money in to go racing well, for this year. The way you could look at it is, at least if you get injured, you could trade it in for an, an operation. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, already, he's already knocked a grand off it. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if Doctor, it. Doctor Funk wants a new R six. <laughs> oh yeah. god! But no, uh, I need to get shot of that. Like ear to the ground. Uh, he's gonna one. leave this studio. What's, Anyone seen, listen, he's gonna leave this again. Have Fuck you seen so, um, Simon Buckmaster? Is uh, running the Triumph team, like the official oh, yeah. Triumph team, and he's got the American lad Brandon Pash and oh, Kyle yeah. Smith. Kyle Smith's a World Super Sport yeah. ra- uh, that- race winner, top yeah. top uh, pilot. So them two, it's a bit of an unknown because of yeah. the bike, but the, those two will be really strong. Who else is going? Obviously, yeah. you've got Deb, uh, Ben Curry. Ben Curry. Curry. He's in McGill again, and who's the team yet? Is West? I take it Westy's not staying. Uh, no, no, they sw- no, Westy. I spoke to Westy the other night. He's not. Uh, not racing. No, no, no. He's right. just doing the world endurance, isn't he? Right. Uh, but just same sort of circumstances as me. Not pay, not paying until uh, to ride. Do you know what I mean? Which is here, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, damn right. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know who his teammate is. Then uh, Jack Jack Kennedy's back in, isn't he? Yeah, with <gasps> Dave Tyson's on a team Z- yeah. on a ZX six. Oh yeah, but that's uh, what do you call the Dickies man? The big Dickies man with the the cool hat. Uh, the big you, Dickies man with the hat. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember. He's running for Dave Tyson, though, isn't he? Of Bike Devil he, Kazakh. Yeah, but it's not just Dave Tyson, to be fair. Uh, because it's something to do with. Is it Pete Jennings involved with that as well? Pete and Jennings runs the. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's the crew chief for and, that. Right. Uh, and the. Uh, the man from Dickies, I can't. Uh, have, uh, another thing, can't have, have you seen that um, Jack's running Mupo suspension as well this oh, year, is which is an odd choice for a uh, um, best advert ever. Yeah. Poster adverts. Anyway, I, know, that's they have, I think they have won a European yeah. Superstock Championship before. So I'm, right. I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to be degraded yeah. by saying it's an odd choice. I'm not saying it's a bad choice, but it's just for the standard Supersport front runners. Yeah. Mubo hasn't been a, a, an established yeah. uh, sort of suspension manufacturer no. in the UK yet. I'm looking forward. Time, to this. Will, time yeah. will tell. But it's uh, a yeah. It's a. I mean, the more you kind of mix mix the ingredients up, the sort of the. the I think <laughs> it'll be mega. Do you know what I mean? They needed something, didn't they? Because yeah. Super Sport was sort of trading out to the, the Motor Two style bikes and this and that mm-hmm. and the other, and even whenever I was in it, you know, Sealy was on the the Motor Two one day, and and I, it not not got my back up, but sometimes at some rounds he was like, you know, it, because his bike was that bloody fast, mm-hmm. he'd park it in the middle of the corner, and then shoot off, and because you're in Super Sport, you're trying to carry momentum. And I used to do my nothing, to be fair. But do, you get, do you get on well with Sealy, by the way? Yeah. 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 Well, what's Sealy on with this year? Yeah. He hasn't got anything. Nothing as yet. He's got yeah. nothing yet. No. That's right. what I was saying. He was offering his services because he's fr- he Stop hasn't got a ride. Stop <laughs> <laughs> He's working. He's I, working. Seen, <laughs> I seen he'd, he'd actually valeted Glenn's car the other day, and yeah. I thought yeah. myself, you know, if six months earlier, they should have both been battling around the North Coast. Exactly. You it's know, at like 200 it? miles an hour. Yeah, and it's, and it's, that's the thing. It's 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 even though he has got the caliber to do it on the circuits as well on a 600 he does uh, you know uh, it's you know because the northwest last year and then this year again is going to be ruined so that's mm. in a sense is probably pro- probably his financial income for the year his main income do you know what yeah, I mean definitely. is gone and it's it's horrible to see that do you know what I mean I'm, I know circumstances change with obviously the whole COVID thing but it's just it's not nice to see people that, the like of you know himself uh, one being out of the job, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And do you know, 
Do you know Sealy? Obviously, he's had a few years in Stock Thousand, like back on the relentless bikes and the the Tyco yeah. bike and various things. He's had some really good good seasons as well. Someone told us this the other day. I'm not. Sure, I'll have to fact check it. But um, I think he's had something like 17 podiums, and he's never finished second. He's always either what. Uh, yeah. That yeah. Is. He's had like something like 17 podiums and. 15 wins or something he's in like a couple of thirds he's never that, finished that, that is uh, quite a statistic that, yeah I think the year that he went into it with the, the lens of Suzuki I think he won nearly everything. every race yeah yeah, yeah. cause the funny, that was the best funny you should that say was the that best right? because I, the, um, there was a time hop on my Facebook today yeah. and it was the race when uh, when he lost that winning streak which was at Croft that when Brogy took him out on the last corner <laughs> and then uh, on, get, no no then the, the Ducati blew up Sc- over the Scott Smart came oh, through right. John John McGuinness came through to win. Scott Smart was second, <laughs> biggest wheelie third, ever. and then blew up over the line. I mean, what a action-packed yeah. race that was! I think that alone should be a good reason why we need to go yeah. back to Croft. I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is yeah. There any? Uh, um, I was about to say, what's your favourite circuit? Like, is there any circuit um, that's have gone or anything like that? Or? Uh, I've only rid Croft once, really. I actually rid it once last year at a test when Dan Linford organised the test, and we went there. But uh, yeah, I rid like a granny all day. And <laughs> I and enjoy Croft, to be honest. It is a proper track, but it's so bumpy now. Uh, I would say Donington probably my favourite track. Right, even though it knocks your shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like uh, it's one of them, like even Knockhill. You know, even though the last time I was there, it broke my legs. I, it wouldn't phase me to go there again. Do you know what I mean? It's it's one of them. I've I've won quite a lot of races at Knockhill more than probably anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so like it's it's one of them. It's there there. I don't have a particular track that I go. Oh, I dislike that. Do you know mm. what I mean? They're just all. I try to find the best part of every single Aye. track and just. What's your most? Right. L- what's your least favorite track then? Uh, Cartagena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know actually really least favourite would be uh, it's, it's take it or leave it job it's one of those isn't yeah. it it's like what, what it's when you love racing motorbikes it's a bit of an oxymoron having yeah. the least favourite isn't no, it no, but yeah. Yeah. I know like, what you're saying Snedden like, never no, I never thought like I went around Snedden and went hey I'm over the moon I drove a million miles for this it was like yeah, yeah I, I, enjoy I know what you mean, but, I know what, no. but I know what you mean though it's like you're just happy to be out on a bike and bikes are mint going fast is mint this is mint it's a left corner this is mint but you know what I mean? I wouldn't go if someone said you had to go to this track, this track. You'd be yeah. like, right, well, it's not and get stuffed. I'd rather go there. Ah, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I don't even know what I could say for that because, like, I just I enjoy a bit of them all. Do you know what I mean? Like Cadwell, it's very narrow and tight, but I love the mountain section. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I, it's one of them. Love the motocross style of it. Uh, Olden, uh, I just it's proper tight and technical in it, really. I love Alton, but Alton doesn't love me. I'm shite around it, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'm not the same, to be fair, recently. Do you know, uh, you mentioned restoring motocross bikes. Is it just motocross bikes you restore? Do you do yeah. road uh, No, I don't really tend to work. I, I, I can't work on uh, super bikes and stuff like that, but I don't... <laughs> too much practice. Yeah. When I was there for birdie, I stripped far too many. Uh, so, yeah, I just I love motocross bikes. Uh, I actually li- listening to Christian's uh, podcast not well it was, I think it was his first one maybe was it yeah. and uh, he just said like you know his, his favourite thing was to love ride supercross and this and, that and the other and uh, not to say I'd love to ride it but I just like AMA for me is mega like uh, like it was on last night and I was watching this morning and then just before I came out here is that the supercross yeah uh, and me and my daughter was watching it because she likes to sit up and watch it with me. Uh, what so two in the morning? <laughs> Even though they say it's going to be on at eleven, you're like, I can you lying yeah. American swines? <laughs> but yeah, like Roxon, uh, Ken Roxon, what a I have, I've I had a quite a selection of motocross bikes there for a while, and but now I'm down to I had a YZ two fifty uh, two thousand fifteen that I'd completely when I broke my legs actually I restored it. Uh, then it's it's gone now back to Ireland. And then I have 1990 CR250 Honda that it's nearly finished, so it'll be in the pipeline for sale soon. It's just it's not to keep. Uh, I, was, I was about to say, do you like? Is this like a? Have you got like a Facebook page for this, no, or do, do just, people to follow you to find these bikes for yeah, sale? Or? No, not really. I just so I just like working on motocross bikes. I've, yeah. You know, ever since I worked that much on a bloody bike in birdies, to be mm-hmm. honest, uh, and seen how well they maintain a bike, uh, it's like literally bare frame after every single round so for me to then be doing that and now I, I've learned so much and I, and not that I couldn't because my dad always brought me up that way but 
just it's, it's another level so now i'm with motocross bikes and stuff like i'm just super anal with how it needs to be done do you know what yeah, i mean good so like now i've bought uh, basically an old scrapper of an 01 125 uh yamaha and it's literally it, it ain't clean at all to be fair and uh, i'll be posting some pics on my uh, story and, and instagram and that soon but uh literally it's it's gonna be down to a bare frame uh for anyone in the motocross that follows Doc Wobb imports and stuff like that, he was an ex-GP mechanic, and I spoke to him to get some new triple clamps and stuff like that, and, you know, billet the uh, linkages and stuff, so it's, yeah. Is this, is this being Chloe's homeschooling? <laughs> 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 no, uh, she does love bikes, and she actually, when we were out, we tried to get a walk out every single, like, Saturday and Sunday, you know what I mean, and uh, because I'm flat out work, so mm -hmm. it's hard for Sam to try and, kill weeks because obviously it's it's not fair on them do you know what I mean Aye. but uh, but yeah like she doesn't like to come to the shed with me she should come for five minutes and spin a couple of wheels and then she'll be bored do you know what I mean as kids yeah. do and she's more interested in the diggers uh, in the yard than, than me bloody motorbikes so uh, is she like four or five or something Chloe uh, yeah four or four yeah <laughs> so uh, but yeah it's like it's one of them she loves bikes and on you know she always talks about riding bikes and this and that and the other but when you start one in front of her she like runs a mile you know what I mean so I uh, but oh, now nah, she's alright she's been riding horses and that and uh, oh the dangerous things well yeah because cause her mum was into horses wasn't she like oh. and uh, bless her she doesn't have her horse anymore but uh, and she's done a couple of riding lessons Chloe and I'm just like oh please no because stick with you, the diggers stick with yeah. the diggers <laughs> I, I'll buy a set of golf clubs or something like that <laughs> do you know what I mean it's a bit cheaper than a horse or a motorbike but uh, but nah they just grow up so fast don't they they do I <laughs> well uh, I, th I think we're, that's no mint I've right. in fact I've just thought of, uh, I've, I'll have to check the Patreon questions we're on like a it's like a social media um, oh, yeah. for like the the special fans we'll, we should call them and uh, I'll just <laughs> Head over about to say, sorry about the fuel so the generator fall over we're right. slowly hot boxing in here it's, it's like my eyes are stinging I love a bit of smell of got two, <laughs> two questions well one of the questions is just a thumbs up from Mr Ian Roder Roderick and Ryan Garside random discussion oh, topic Ryan. naughty slash dramatic things top riders have done in the past e.g. Caparossi taken Haradas out on a purpose for the 250 GP title or Agostini lying to Lawson about Marlborough cutting funding Rossi Marquez 2015 drama etc I think that's a can of worms that yeah. will be here all night talking yeah. about that and other than you knocking Steve Brogan off I, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I think the wildest thing I done was uh, what was it oh the scooter wheelie at Knock Hill what was that <laughs> It was on social media. Oh, fact, yeah. I I Honestly, that, that was yeah. savage. Can you like please put this in audible visualization <laughs> for all our listeners? I want you to talk through exactly how you got talked into it. What was exactly this, happened? Was this controversial? Through... No, yeah, not no, at all. It's just him being a dick. It's yeah, brilliant. proper like just whiskey for all like uh, <laughs> on the paddock. Yeah, like. I think it was like the year I was riding the superbike so like you know what I mean just one of them boys like if he can do it I can do it a little bit better do you know what I mean it was a bit of that and uh, Shaky I can't remember Shaky do you know Wag is his mate mm -hmm. and he Wag was like yeah, yeah we'll do this do that and all the rest and uh, my brother and all was there and and I can't remember who it was that done a little one and so, like, so obviously sitting on stand give it a bit of rev rock back and it catches and then wheel and the first one I done was like you know when it comes up but it's just like oh, it just needs another inch and then you're at the balance point and you're like away and I thought fucking hell I need a little bit more as you do <laughs> and just as the next time then obviously you do it the second time everyone videos then don't they <laughs> that was the time was like it just went <laughs> Honestly, this thing oh. absolutely roofs me. Oh, like, how did people find this video? Was it Shaky Burn? Uh, or oh, did you share it? Oh, what uh, you used it? I, I can't even remember. It is, I think it was. I can't remember it was Shaky the video. Did, oh, it was. It was actually because my my mate that was there as well. He had a video of it, and <laughs> obviously I had it. And we shared it between ourselves, and Bertie could not find out. He didn't find out. I to literally took the scooter home and fixed it and repaired it between another scooter that was lying in the workshop and that. So he never found out of it. So fact, that, that wasn't really the worst of the crash damage that year, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> the minimum. A thousand pound scooter, I don't think would have been much of a difference <laughs> yeah. in the scheme of was, things. But that was his favourite scooter, mate. <laughs> 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 but yeah, that was. Uh, that's got some hits, that. 
Mm, that yeah, is like, honestly I was crying you know like you know when people over exaggerate these days gone I was crying love it I was physically in the van tears rolling down <laughs> my cheeks watching this I just yeah that was it was good crap to be fair like you, you know it's one of them things you just yeah use the dickhead that just tries everything do you know what I mean and that was that just sort of put in stone like everything that I'd done that year was just I just went and tried mm. <laughs> no, in, God ter- lad. in terms of uh, controversial things though if, have you ever like came to fight in Park Fermi or has anything like ever anything uh, like that happened yeah I don't think so no uh, must I'm, try harder Keith yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, yeah when I've, he returns I've, back to the paddock next year yeah, like yeah. there's boom uh, yeah. I've had a couple of run-ins in Supermoto uh, whereas here we like, go yeah yeah uh, I, mean, I, get, I get on well with now and, and that but back in the day like y- you know young kid on the block tra- and I just last corner last la- last lap job someone went up in, it was actually uh, over at Raura uh, in Cumbria actually and there's long long right hander uh, someone went up the inside of Eddie Smith and as he went up the inside I went up the inside and as Eddie had run wide and came back when he came back I was there and, and literally took the front wheel from under him and he went down and I, I never thought anything of it I was just following another rider through that's alright went across the line uh, we had to because the track was still alive we had to wait for you know everyone to finish <laughs> next thing Eddie Smith came across the line and, and literally I turned round and just as I turned round he was there and he went <laughs> click I'm like alright and was this uh, with a lid on yeah, or lid off just literally straight in through goggles and I'm like Oh, I didn't expect that, and I never, I was proper like chilled out kid then, like, and I, I never said anything, and my dad and everything went mental, and uh, <laughs> there was a bit of a kick off, and uh, I can't remember what happened, but uh, it never really went anything else after that. But yeah, it was, I was a bit the only thing, mm-hmm. uh, other than obviously me running with Andrew Irwin and and Glenn and that, and. Uh, Oh, they're not. It's never on been. track guy. Yeah, on the track. On track yeah. crack. That's what it's about. Yeah, that should have been a good name for the podcast. Not this chasing the ranger on the. <laughs> it's like even on the you track know, crack. Even with the, I think Andrew put something on social media not that long ago. You know about uh, his passes and this, and that, and the other. And to be, to be fair, I think his passes were mega. You know what I mean? Like I, I would have done the exact same, and and I think that's why we had sort of a. Mutual respect. Y- yeah, Aye. and you know we ha- sort of had it coming together because we had the exact same thought process. Do you mm. know what I mean? So like, if he was gonna pull a hard pass, I was gonna do it. Do you know what I mean? And there was that was just the way it worked. Mm. And uh, it it never really it got dirty a little bit at the end of the year. Do you know what I mean? And uh, on my side, my side to be fair, more than anything, uh, I, then I ended up. I had a false neutral to Ben Curry out to be fair by accident, which cost me a championship. Ah, Asin. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, no, nah, not not a great lot to be fair. Uh, just stay clean. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and so look, and uh, so going into the season, yeah, you've got at the moment we've kind of got two options: one on the Honda, one on the Kawasaki. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, in the next sort of week or so, you'll find out what you're doing and get something, get the the wheels in motion, get yeah. started. And I know you said about the um, you're not a big fan of the whole GoFundMe page, but I'm sure if people are wanting to help out and stuff, they'll get, they'll get in touch with you on your social media yeah, and stuff. And that's it. We'll, we'll go and give yourself a plug. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah, like uh, just everyone out there, like I appreciate the support. But and people say like, oh, it's only three pound per person, you know. If everyone that's following me and gets this, and that. but it's it's one of them. If if it's gonna happen, it'll happen. Do you mm. know what I mean? If not, we'll just uh, mix it up. And is it ideal. Keith, Keith Farmer thirty three? Yeah, that, okay. uh, I think Keith Farmer three hundred three on Instagram and Twitter and and Facebook. To be fair, yeah, or I Keith do. Farmer racing on Facebook. But right. And that's the but best yeah. way to get in touch with you but no awesome absolutely awesome but thank you so much for coming on again it's always good crack it's uh, oh no it's brilliant <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's good and crack. a huge thank you to our patrons and our sponsor Colchester Kawasaki and we'll catch up with you next week thanks very much so, next week he's so, back on not Keith I'm just saying like, <laughs> I'm, speaking, I'm speaking to the fans at home man <laughs> I'll, I will catch up with you sometime soon no, though, right. take, take care, care. <laughs> click buy deliver with remote purchasing from the two-time Motorcycle News Dealer of the Year, Colchester Kawasaki. Proud sponsors of Chasing the Racing.